legendary and fabled venues of college football. This is Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We welcome you on Fast Sports along with the usual 105,000. The battle between the 11th ranked Wolverines of Michigan and the Tigers of the University of Memphis. Great to have you along, everybody. I'm Michael Regai. Join me in welcoming my telecast partner, the former head coach of Michigan State, George Perlis. Lloyd Carr has a chance to start 3-0 in his Wolverine career. No other Michigan football team or coach has done that since 1986. George, two tremendous wins with a lot of Michigan emotion attached. Well, that's right, and they're going to win another one. I think this will be their third in a row. They have a good defense, a defense that's going to help them win championships, good speed, and they have a happy team. They have a team that really wants to play for Lloyd Carr. I think you're going to have their third victory this afternoon. You couldn't write a greater script than the one that young redshirt freshman quarterback Scott Dreisbach put on in the opener, and Dreisbach has been sensational in both wins. Yet, George, he's got some of the finest receivers in America to throw to. Well, Hayes and Toomer, it's a great twosome. Some people think the best twosome that's ever been at Michigan on one team, and that's just what Dreisbach needs. He needs someone to help him while he grows, and they're doing it for him. I think they understand that. They're working together, and they should put on another strong performance today. Now, on the defensive side, the Michigan Wolverines have kind of tinkered with some things. They're now in the 4-3, and Trent Zinkowitz and Jared Irons feel right at home in this now attacking defense. Well, it's a strong defense. Not only those two, they have eight defensive linemen that can play. They also have a core of linebackers that are strong, a secondary that can cover but also hit. They're going to let people catch balls in front of them and then try to knock the ball loose. It's a good defense. Now, Lloyd Carr has talked about getting that special team work juiced up. They're going to have to face two of the best in the country in Ryan Ross Kelly and Brian Davis of Memphis. Ross Kelly, the punt return specialist, ranked number nine in the nation last year. Davis, number nine in the nation with kickoff returns. Their whole defense ranked number three nationally. So they're a good defensive football team, and they have a couple skilled athletes. You can see the coaches all juiced up. You ready to go? Ready to go. It's time to get the pads out and hit somebody. Kickoff coming up. That's why you're here. The Wolverines look to go to 3-0. and Memphis, the opposition, coming at you next on Pass Sports. Beautiful sun-kissed maize and blue afternoon in Ann Arbor, Michigan, as you can see. Perfect Saturday in September for football. We're all set to go to see if the Wolverines can go to 3-0. and Jimmy Keith will build it deep to the true freshman out of Detroit. This is Clarence Williams from the goal line. Williams works his way back over the 15, and that's where the Michigan Wolverines will start their offense for their first possession against the Memphis Tigers. Let's take a look at that uh, Michigan offense as Lloyd Carr has this offensive line and moving the football better in the run game. Runyon at the left tackle. Damon Detson, Rod Payne, maybe one of the best centers in Michigan history along the lines of Steve Everett, Joe Marinero, and John Jansen. Amani Toomer, Jay Remersma, Mercury Hayes, three of the best in the nation for Scott Dreisbach, Chris Floyd, and Tamunga Biakabatuka. Motion from Hayes, Dreisbach to put it up. That slip screen, Amani Toomer. Toomer with a move at the 20, still on his feet out to the 28-yard line before he was finally taken down by Memphis's defensive tackle. So Amani Toomer looking strong early on from Scott Dreisbach. A great run after the reception. The ball was only thrown about three yards, but he ran on his own. That's athletic ability there. Omani Toomer making the catch right away. He only had one for 29 yards last week. Toomer continuing to work his way up on the Michigan receiving ranks. First and 10 in that pro set for Dreisbach. First call for Tim Biakabatuka over the 30 to about the 32-yard line. That right side of that Memphis defensive line closed it down. As you see, the uh, hit was made by that big defensive right end, Marvin Thomas. Well, they're working on that run now. They're going to overplay the run. They've got to. If they let Michigan have this running game, it'll be all over early. So Michigan's got to run the football, establish a running game, even though they know they're keying on them. Biakabatuka with three. Second and seven for Scott Dreisbach. Jay Reimers from the tight end. Toomer with Hayes in motion. Dreisbach on that counter. Biakabatuka finding the going tough as he got stood up by the middle of that Memphis defensive line. That's the way it's going to be. They're going to overplay the run. You'll see when they throw the football, there'll be some room in there, especially on first and second down. But Michigan has to do this to make sure and not come out and leave their game plan. Rip Shearer's football team beaten last week down at Mississippi State by Jackie Sherrill's bunch, 28-18. They got a chance to 
get a stop against Michigan here. Third and seven from the 32 with motion from Reimers. The reverse to Mercury Hayes with a flag down. Hayes looking for a block. Mercury all over the 40. Another flag, midfield. Mercury Hayes could take it the distance. Remember, there are flags down as Mercury Hayes goes 68 yards to Fader. But wait a minute, it's probably going to come back. A great block downfield by Yaka Patuka. He came all the way from the right side. The last man that could make the tackle, he came back, blocked him high. An excellent block that took it all the way. Here you see it coming off. Motion. Reverse. Now watch to your right. As he goes into the goal line, you'll see way downfield. You'll see 21 come out of the pitcher now. The last person that can tackle him. Here he comes, here he comes all the way. Great cutoff block. That's what did it. Michigan back, certainly, you got, if you play a wide receiver back, you got the block here for Lloyd Carr. You saw Bianca Batuka do it. Let's wait for the call from referee David Whitvote. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. It'll cost the Wolverines 10 and negate the touchdown run from Mercury Hayes. Hayes, who was so brilliant with the two touchdown catches in the win over Virginia, and then followed that up with outstanding work from his flanker spot last week in the win over Illinois. Let's call it third down now and 13 from the 26. The line to make is out near the 40. Triple wides for Scott Dreisbach. Off the seven-step drop, wants to air it out deep for Toomer. Had some contact up this Michigan sideline. Incomplete. Well, that's what penalties do to you. Michigan was the most penalized team in the Big Ten last year. Lloyd has been working on that. This, this one time it backfired. So Nate DeLong in for his first work of the afternoon, kicking it away to Ryan Roskelly, who we talked about at the top, number nine in the nation last year, has got that fair catch at the 40-yard line. And that's where the Memphis Tigers offense, Rip Shearer, will go to work. Don't forget that DeLong's a left-footed punter that puts a spin on the ball the opposite way. It's a little difficult to catch. Illinois had time, uh, problems with that last week. This time, no problem. Bernard Odin is the quarterback out of Spring Hill, Tennessee. He went 7 and 19 in relief of uh, Joe Borsich last week. Whitman Spalding at the tail. But it's Borich who's getting the start today. First call of the contest for Memphis goes to Whitman Spalding, who has stood up on that right side of that Michigan defensive front. Let's set that Michigan defense for you. Up front in that front four, Glenn Steele, Trent Zankowicz, Jason Horn, and Joaquin Fiesel, along with Jared Irons, who you see that strong middle linebacker for the Wolverines. Rob Sweat, the true freshman. David Bowens, Mike Elston share time at that other linebacker spot. True freshman Charles Woodson at one corner. Second and seven now for Memphis. Keep it on the ground again. Equipment Spalding. Spalding. Trying that left side. Nothing much in there. Boric at uh, quarterback. There was a question who would start, Boric or Ogden. Ogden came in in the second half last week and put 18 points on the board. Boric had a uh, concussion in the third quarter. He started the last four games last year for him and starting this one. Third and five from the 45. Ross Skelly and Chancey Carr double wide to the right for Joe Boric. On that veer inside, give it to the fullback, Darius Blevins, and that Michigan front rose up to knock him down. Joaquin Fazell made the first hit. Big play by Fazell. He not only took care of the fullback on the option, he took care of the quarterback at the same time. Same way they practiced it this week. Shaking it off the side of the foot. 
the Wolverines of Michigan going to be the benefactor of only a 10-yard punt from Memphis's Mike Coughlin. Coughlin came in here averaging almost 45 per kick, but only gets about 10 yards of it this time, setting up the Wolverines in excellent field position for their second possession. That option was played beautiful. Just the way they practice it. They had a drill just like that where the defensive end would close, take the fullback and look at the quarterback. He did both this last time. Lloyd Carr coming out with double, double tight ends. The freshman Jeremy Tooman along with Jay Reamers. Now the one back and it's Tim Biaka the two on the toss sweep. Trying to make that cut back but Richard Hogan's would have nothing of it. Hogan's very active and quick linebacker for Memphis. Well he's got the movement. They're playing the run. They're overloading the run. There's eight people up front there. And Lloyd is going to establish that run and watch when first down this series, some series in the, in the future, there'll be a play pass for a big gainer because they're setting it up. You can see it happening right in front of our eyes. Tim Biakabatuka, who had that huge third quarter last week in which he piled up three touchdowns on three Wolverine possessions. Only got two there, second and eight with motion out of Mercury Hayes. Dreisbach to go up top. Feeling the heat. Dreisbach lost the football. Loose at the 40. Bianca Batuka got on it, or did he? No. Scott Dreisbach trying to get out of pressure. Lost the football, and the Wolverines are going to keep it. Bianca Batuka was there, along with big John Jansen, that 277-pound redshirt freshman offensive tackle. Got to take better care of the football, Coach. Well, he got up inside that pocket, and when you're running with the football as a quarterback, once you make that decision to go up inside that pocket, you got to go all the way and tuck that ball under your arm. He knows it. He's still young, a young, young quarterback learning all the time. Reisbach lost seven. Let's call it third and 15 now. Just underway in the first on pass forks out of Ann Arbor. Reisbach, that short underneath route, has got Mercury Hayes, but Hayes is knocked down by that Memphis defensive secondary making the hit Darian Sutton the 167 pound junior. This is what Michigan has to do. They have to have patience. They have to wear them down. They know they're a big favorite. Sometimes kids want to put points on the board right away. Nate DeLong standing back at his 30. Ryan Roskelly ready to grab it at about the 15. Oh DeLong got it to turn over. Pretty boot. Ross Kelly from the 20 and down he goes. That Wolverine special team work showing up again. Excellent hit by the Wolverine special team performer Sam Soar, the young redshirt freshman linebacker out of Arthur Hill in Saginaw. That left-footed spin is tough. It's always floating away from you. You're used to having things go to your right with the left-footed kicker. It goes to your left. There'll be a fumble yet today on that punt. All those left-handers or left-footers do it a little bit differently, huh, Coach? Well, you... No score yet. Memphis and Michigan when we get you back to Ann Arbor on Pass Sports. Now it is Bernard Odin running that option, left it on the turf. And look at the Michigan defense rise up again. Joaquin Fazell. What a defense. Just the way they practice it this week. They worked and they worked and they worked on this option. And that was done beautifully. A lot of people on the ball. Which is very difficult to do. Everybody's assigned to a man. When you see in the option more than one person making the tackle, you know they're well prepared. Because once you make a mistake and everybody gang tackles, that pitch is gone. Hazell got to Bernard Owen and then went and made the hit on Quitman Spalding, too. A loss of six. Second and 16 now, back at the 14. Odin to go up top. Got Spalding over the middle. Out over the 30, where he's gang tackled by the Wolverine defense. Marcus Ray on the hit, but not before the Odin to Spalding connection picked up 19 yards in a Memphis first down. Well, it's a crossing pattern, and he catches the ball on the dead run. That's a little bit different than just going out there and turning around and catching the ball because Michigan has secondary people that will light you up. Clarence Thompson, Mike Elston, Marcus Ray all on the hit. Memphis in their second possession from the 34, operating out of the one back. Off play action, Odin is gonna go down. 
in the grasp of Michigan's big Jason Horn, who continues his excellent play, the 270-pound senior out of Lafayette, Indiana. That's Jason Horn's third, third sack of the season. Michigan, at this time last year, had four sacks. In the first two games this year, they have eight sacks. That's the ninth. They're averaging four a game. That's a lot. George, you uh, certainly you think it's more dictated by their change of the 4-3 or that they're just flying around and emotionally getting to the ball? I think two things. The ability these kids have in going to the 4-3 definitely has helped. Second and 19 now from the 25 out of the eye for Bernard Oden. That quick drop sets up that flanker screen. Charlie Wilson oh! with the brilliant interception. Oh, the true freshman out of Fremont Ross High School in the state of Ohio. Reddit stepped in front of Chancey Carr and made the brilliant INT. Mike, that's a Sunday play. They don't do that on Sundays. A great play. They're very, very, very high in Woodson. They think he can be as good as they've ever had. That showed it right there. Bo was really excited about watching him practice this week. He recovered a fumble last week against Illinois. This week, Charles Woodson. Coach just said it. There you see a good look at the fluid 192-pound athlete, defensive backfield coach Vance Bedford raving about him. Wolverines, first attempt from the 19 on the quick trap. Kamunga Biaka Batuka following Rod Payne, Joe Marinero inside the 15. What's interesting, that ball went up inside, but to watch Tumor and Hayes block downfield, that's when you get the big plays. These kids not only catch the ball, they're faster athletes, but they've been taught to block. We approach six and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Terrific to have you with us on Pass Sports. Wolverines of Michigan and Memphis. Michael Regai, George Perlis from Michigan Stadium. Again, Dreisbach, Bianca Batuka. Look at him pick and dance his way inside the 10, down to the eight-yard line. The hit finally put on out of that Memphis secondary by Keith Spann and Jesse Allen. They give him the ball seven yards deep so he can look up inside and look at those lanes and make those cuts. And he made all the right ones that time. But watch, when we get a big play, you'll see these wide receivers blocking. And that's really something that's appreciated by the offensive line, the whole football team. When you see those fast kids, those great skilled athletes going downfield, throwing their bodies around. And they're doing it. Hayes and Toomer, another two kids that are going to play on Sundays. George, we talked about in the Virginia game, the Lloyd Carr not pleased with the offensive output. They didn't run the football. Last week, it looked like they saddled up Payne and Marinero, the two big boys in the middle, and said, we are going to run the football and make an impact here at Illinois. Well, Lloyd's stubborn in that way, and that's good. That's a compliment <laughs> that's to a good coach. stubborn. He's learned well. Being from Riverview right down the road here, he's going to make that running game work. He's going to make these kids make it work. Bianca Batuka to pick it up the first down. Sophomore Chris Floyd in front of touchdown Tim in the eye. First and goal from the eighth. Dreisbach again, Bianca Batuka picks his way inside the five. Look at him fight and battle his way down close to the three-yard line, carrying Memphis defender Chris Smith, one of their top cornerbacks, had to make the hit secure hit. It's not very long, and it doesn't look like it's a great run, but ladies and gentlemen, that was a great run. Turning, holding on to the ball, that's when a lot of people would have fumbled. To get that extra yard, he got an extra three yards. Now second down, three. Bianca Batuka with the Wolverines now at the three-yard line. 75% efficiency in the red zone. Keep it with Bianca Batuka into the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. Fourth TD of this early 1995 season for the junior from Quebec, Tamunga Bianca Batuka. Is Lloyd Carr stubborn good? Is he great? He wouldn't do anything but stick it in there. You know who's got to be the happiest guy in the stadium today is Don Cannon and Bo Schimbecker to see their protege do the things that got them where they are at this university. That's a beautiful job, Lloyd Carr, with that offensive team just pounding that football. Remy Hamilton. All-American candidate out of the hole to Jay Remersma to add the PAT. Wolverines of Michigan have struck first after the tremendous interception by Charles Woodson. Tim Biakabatuka, 16th touchdown in his Michigan career, fourth this year. Michigan on top of Memphis, 7 to nothing. More coming up on Pass Sports out of Ann Arbor. Wave the maize and brew proudly always.
was in Ann Arbor. Wolverines kept off a four play 19 yard drive that makes Wolverine followers who sing the praises of Tim Biaka Batuka. Biaka Batuka, as we said, fourth touchdown of the year. This one from three yards away. Brian Davis, one of the top return men in the nation. George Bullis was telling you about him before the football game. Well, Brian Davis ranks number nine in the nation last year. Here he goes. Jay Feely got it all teed up. Feely will bang it to Davis at the three. Ooh, ooh, Davis took a stick at about the 19 where he was popped to the ground. Leading that Wolverine special team charge, Eric Mays. Mays, the freshman out of Kalamazoo Portage Northern, been making an impact on the special teams for Jim Herman. The, here we go. Watch this hit. Something about the special teams. Lloyd's tried to keep all his starters. Look at that. People throwing their bodies around. Lloyd's tried to keep all his starters off. Only five starters play on special teams. Hayes and Toomer, the return people, are two of them. Now, interesting. Rip Shearer going back to Joe Boric. So he is alternating quarterbacks. Boric, this is his second possession. He started it. Bernard Oden had the last one. Oh, yeah. The Michigan defense rising up, keeping it on the ground. Memphis nowhere to go, as you see. Again, Joaquin Fazell, Will Carr, Jared Irons, that entire front seven seemingly having a piece of Quitman Spaulding. Remember what I say in November. This is an excellent defensive team. These kids on defense have been highly recruited. This is some of the best talent in the country. They're playing happy. Ryan Roskelly, Chancey Carr, double wides to the left, as you see. Joaquin Fazell, the talented young athletes in the Big Ten. Starting that option right. Boris, nowhere to go. Mike Elston, the junior linebacker with sophomore eligibility out of St. Mary's, Ohio, wrapping him up. You can see that in the box, the defensive coaches will go over that one. Had he pitched that time, they might have got a couple yards. They're going to go over that one. It's a good thing that it happened. The quarterback didn't pitch it. They got nothing out of it. It's now third down and 16 yards to go. Memphis running game. Needing something to get it jump started early. That Wolverine defense flying to the football. Joe Boric looking at third and 16 now from the 14. Going to go up to this right sideline. Wanted Chancey Carr. The coverage by the Wolverines from Marcus Ray and Chuck Winters. Three and out again for Memphis. Well, here's what you have. You have the rush. He had to throw the ball early. Sometimes you have the coverage where the people get to the quarterback because you have great coverage. That's the rush. These kids are quick. You don't see any defensive linemen on Michigan's team that are fat. They're lean. Got to get kids who can run in college football these days to play defense. That's right. Mercury Hayes awaiting the boot of Mike Coughlin. Coughlin only had a 10-yard kick his first time. Wolverines don't go after it. Hayes going to signal fair catch at the 47-yard line. Wolverines will start in excellent field position, trying to tack more on the board after the Viaca Batuca touchdown a moment ago. Lloyd is interested in keeping his people fresh. So they only have five players that are on their special teams that are starters. Two of them are Hayes and Toomer, the return people, King, Thompson, and Floyd. Everybody else gets a blow. They're out there. They're fresh. You see them substituting people. This is going to be a fresh team at the end of the game because they're using a lot of people. They're playing some five freshmen. Scott Dreisbach with Tim Biakabatuka in the one back behind him. That quick three-step drop. has got a Monty Toomer on that quick out. Toomer over the midfield stripe. Not about the 48-yard line, so that quick three-step drop. A lot of times, George, that's used, obviously. You get those corners to bite, and then they can go to work on them. Yes, and the other thing, you want to give your quarterback a little confidence. We've got, they've got seven points ahead of them, so you want to throw the ball. Let him get used to throwing the ball. Dreisbach gets a completion there. He feels good about himself. Now they'll go back to the running game. But when they go for the bomb, I'm sure it'll be off the play action pass because they've got him set up. Second catch of the contest, Amani Toomer, his eighth of the year. On that inside trap, Bianca Batuka with room. Look at him shake the leg to the outside. That's going to be a face mask on Memphis's cornerback, Chris Allen. Bianca Batuka, what a runner. He had that limp leg there, threw everybody off. A kid from Canada. 
Interesting story how they recruited him. He was down in their summer camp. They saw what kind of athlete he was. And from then on, it was all over. They were recruiting him hard. It's very difficult in Canada. They don't have good tape. They don't have film. They don't have a lot of things. But they found him in his summer camp. And since then, they've been going to that Montreal area and getting more kids. You see the ability to give a leg and take it away. Tim Biakabatuka got the face mask as he was uh, dragged down by Jerome Woods, and that's going to cost Memphis more down to the 22-yard line. I keep waiting for that first down play pass because they're set up. Chris Howard now at the tailback, the sophomore out of the state of Louisiana, giving Tim Biakabatuka a blow. Anthony Williams wide left, Mercury Hayes right, but Reamer's in motion. There's the play pass. Off play action. Drives by. Guns that out route to Anthony Williams at the 14-yard line before he was finally pushed out of bounds by Dan Bonner, that outside linebacker. Drives back, showing arm strength there, throwing that out. That was thrown on a rope. There was nothing deep. They did what we thought they would do. Go to the play pass. Go for the big one. Memphis played it well, so the receivers came back to the ball and still got seven-yard gain. Now the Wolverines Anthony Williams who blocked the punt for that touchdown against Illinois and was named special team player of the week first reception in 1994. Chris Howard trying to make a cut off the block of Joe Marinero Marinero that backside guard was trying to kick out but it was uh, smelled out nicely by big uh, Brian Barnett one of the top guys up front on this Memphis D. Barnett, a 6'1", 276-pound senior. I'll give Chris Howard just one. As you see big Joe Marinero, certainly in the uh, the mold of the uh, the top offensive guards here in the history of Michigan football. Inside trap, Chris Floyd. Floyd needed to get down to the 12-yard line. The sophomore from Cooley got knocked down by the middle of that Memphis defense. He'll be a little bit short. Bring up fourth down in the crowd, as always, George, urging the head coach to go ahead and try to get that first down and punch it in. Well, Floyd's got a seven-point lead now. Uh, he'll either take the time off and think about it. He's going all the way. You can see this huddle has helped Michigan eliminate some confusion and, and penalties. Last year, that no huddle was a little confusing for the opponent and also for themselves. This year, they get into the huddle. Out of the I formation, Floyd and Howard on fourth and one. Chris Howard battling, needed to get down to about the 12. Very close to that line to make to keep this drive alive, but we'll have to wait until they unpilot. They're going to have to measure this. I don't think he made it. Looks like he missed it by about a half a yard. Well, Chris Howard, who came into the contest, averaged about 2.6 per carry. He scored his first touchdown of his Michigan career last week in that 13-yard touchdown pass from Scott Dreisbach. Now he's about a half yard short. Uh, Just Memphis half defense half. rising up. Well, they had him down here deep. You know, it's like anything else. If you do that and it works, it's a great call. If you don't do it, it doesn't work, uh, you're open for criticism. That's part of being a coach. Lloyd knows that. Every coach goes through that. Uh, there's a lot of people in the stands now that wish he would have kicked it. They've had he gone all the way for a touchdown, it wouldn't have been a problem. So coaches get used to that. No big deal. Michigan offense has their drive thwarted. And once again, it is back to Bernard Oden at the quarterback spot. So Rip Shear shuffling his QBs. Off play action. Oden guns it into the middle. The pass is caught. Kind of threw that sidearm, pushed it in there. It was uh, against zone. They, they threw it low. Very difficult to cover that. It was thrown about knee high. Chancy Carr making his fourth reception of the year. Caught three for 31 yards last week in the loss to Mississippi State. Here he goes. You see him throwing sidearm. A lot of people around, but the ball was thrown perfectly low at the knees. Anything else, they could have batted it down. First attempt from the 24 for Memphis with 45 seconds left in the first quarter. They try to uh, run the fullback and establish him on that beer option. Darius Blevins knocked down for 
gain of about one. And Glenn Steele, Trent Zinkowitz, Jason Horn, part of that talented Michigan front four. They're insisting on trying to run this option. It doesn't look like it's going off very smoothly. And I think the Michigan defensive linemen have a lot to do with it. Coming up about 15 seconds left in the first quarter. As Odin looks at second and nine, he's going to run option right. Good cut. Out over the 35. First down for Bernard Odin, the 203-pound sophomore out of Spring Hill, Tennessee, with just six seconds left. Of course, clock stopping on the uh, the move of the chains on the Odin scamper for the first down. Well, Bernard Odin was a highly recruited kid. He was a prop 42 last year. He didn't play. This is his first year of getting any action. What he can do is run the ball probably a little bit better than he throws it. Have gone by the boards here inside Michigan Stadium. Wolverines on top of Memphis 7 nothing. A lot more football coming up on Passport. Michael Regai, George Perlis, glad you're with us on pass. We start the second quarter. Memphis with a football. Bernard Oden wanted option, and that is pass batted down and then into the hands of one of his receivers. That pass was uh, rerouted off the hands of the Michigan defensive front into the two fullback Darius Blevins. Blevins has become a big play receiver for Memphis. Hit on a 68-yarder from, from uh, Oden last week in the loss. Here we go at the replay. Thinking of the option, trying to throw against the zone, batted ball. That's what you call the way the ball bounces. Jared Irons had uh, the big left hand on it. Darius Blevins with the reception. Give him six, call it second and four. This is Frank Fletcher, the backup tailback to Quinton Spaulding. There were seven people on that tackle. That's what you call gang tackling. Seven people to the ball. And that's why Lloyd can go for that first down on fourth down. He's got confidence in this defense. And it was Quitman Spalding and not Fletcher. The number one tail was in there. Just underway in the second quarter. Wolverines got seven on the board from Tim Biakabatuka on their third possession of the contest. Third down and four now for Bernard Oden and this offensive Memphis. Triple wides. One back. Odin with that quick drop. Wanted to gun it. Michigan was going to let him. They were playing man with a free safety. They were pressing every wide receiver. Their athletes were too good. So that's what Lloyd's saying. He's saying he's got a good defense. They got into a bind there with three yards to go. What do they do? They play man all over the field. One free safety and just pressing him. Wanted to go to Chris Powers at tight end, but you saw Rob Sweat on the Wolverine coverage. Well, Memphis is going to have to kick it away. Mike Coughlin will hit it. About his own 30-yard line. Mercury Hayes back. Almost blocked by Clint Copenhaver. Mercury Hayes will fair catch it at the 25. So the Wolverines will get their first possession of the second quarter as the defense continues to shackle Memphis in their uh, opportunities to try to put points on the board. Well, that was definitely a block. Everybody was going for it. They're about a foot away. They'll try that again. That makes the, everybody very nervous. I'll tell you, it makes it nervous. All those coaches in the box on the sidelines, let alone those players, and let alone that punter. That'll keep you honest. See Rip Shearer, the first-year head coach at Memphis. Memphis now part of Conference USA, and that takes some of the old Metro and the great Midwest. Cincinnati, Houston, Louisville, Southern Miss, Tulane, Memphis, the football playing institutions of the Conference USA. Dreisbach at first down. Got Mercury Hayes on that curl route. Good for 11 yards and a Wolverine first down. Mercury Hayes, the beginning of what looks like just a tremendous senior season here in Ann Arbor. Dreisbach took a little hit after that throw. He's up again, ready to go. He's got a lot of enthusiasm. In the contest against Virginia and Illinois, Dreisbach has tried to establish Hayes and Toomer with uh, the home run stuff, the deep stuff. Today, 
He's starting to hit into the intermediary zone. Quick again, three-step drop. Almost had it picked off by Richard Hogan. Hogan's that middle linebacker was shadowing Jay Remersma, stepped in front of him and almost had uh, six points straight ahead of him. If he'd intercepted that, he would have gone all the way. That was a zone defense. They didn't get much of a drop. The area that's open is that area about 18 yards just in front of the free safety. Richard Hogan's. We talk about uh, probably their uh, best linebacker, very active from that middle linebacking spot. Second and ten now for Scott Breidenbach in the Wolverine offense. And that delay inside, Tim Diakabatuka taken down in his tracks. Memphis defense. They brought a linebacker there to uh, mix up the blocking. They had a little crossing in that inside line and changed up on, on Michigan there and, and messed up their blocking scheme. Jesse Allen led this ball club in 1994 with his 128 tackles, 228 pounder for that man, the head coach Rip Shearer. Scott drives back from the Michigan offense now, looking at third and ten from the 37. Quick drop on that slot route by Todd Richards. Richards making his first Michigan appearance in this 1995 season. The Wolverines needed 10. They only got six on the Dreisbach Richards hookup, and Nate DeLong will have to kick it away. Well, Memphis played man for man that time and did a good job. They wouldn't let anybody get inside. Michigan's trying to do is fake outside, release the inside to get a big gainer. Third punt of the day now for Nate DeLong, the left footer. Get it to turn over for him that time. Ross Skelly on the run at the 25, up over the 30. Michigan special teams put the clamps on him. Sam Sword, along with the uh, long staff snapper. Got to be Mark careful Lash. there. Got to be careful there. Ross Kelly is an uh, excellent punt returner. He caught that in a dead run. Good thing that Michigan had good coverage downfield. It was a short punt, not too high. It was in a position where Ross Kelly could take off with it, but there was good coverage. Bernard Oden back at the quarterback spot. He and Joe Borich have uh, shared the position today for Rip Shear. Oden off the play fair. Guns it deep up the right side and, and overthrew his intended receiver. He wanted to go to Brian Powell. Powell, the 5'11", 190 pound sophomore in coverage. Michigan, Clarence Thompson, Steve King, and Marcus Ray. Memphis will have more, more success throwing the ball short. You can see here on the replay, they only have 37% average in their pass completions in their first game. Good rush, though. That had something to do with it. Good coverage, good rush. Everybody playing their position. Michigan in that 4-3 that Bernardo takes a look at. On second attempt at the 31, he'll start option left. Moving his way out over the 35 to about the 38-yard line. Charles Woodson put the stop another flag yeah, out there. We had there. a flag come in from the backside there. George, how tough is it that you were just talking about throwing the football for a ball club that likes to run the option? Isn't it difficult? You have to put so much time in trying to perfect that option attack offensively that it may take away from your pass game? Yeah, sometimes you have good percentages because you run the option throwing the ball. It's not because you have a good passing game. It's because it takes so much effort to stop that option. And that's the case with Memphis. They, they want to run the option, they run the option, they throw the pass to keep you honest, and they have some success with it. When they just Holding drop back. On the offense. 10-yard penalty, repeat, second down. When they just drop back or when they play pass, uh, a typical passing game, they're not too effective. Last week, 37%. Last year, they were below uh, 40% in their pass completions. What they are is an option team passing at times, trying to catch you sleeping. Odin hit on 7 of 19 last week for 155 yards, as we talked about after he entered in the second quarter. He's looking at second and long here. 19, the line to make the 41. They try to start option right, and a whole host of blue Wolverine shirts on him. He ran into his fullback, Darius Blevins, trying to get that option attack started. Yeah, there was a mix up in the backfield there. Blevins running into him. Now you can see this is when it's tough when you're an option team and you get yourself in a position here where you need almost 20 yards. You can see this option here. Watch the fullback. Boom. Quarterback forced him too wide, and that's the end of that play. But now this is uh, this is when you need to throw the ball, and this isn't their this isn't what they do best. 
Simmons, Carr, Horn, and Fizell, the front four now in this third and 20. Lloyd Carr can go situationally with his defense. McGraw play, Blevins got knocked down before he ever got started. Michigan was playing a uh, double zone that time, and Memphis admitted it. That's not their game to drop back and try to throw the ball and get uh, 20 yards. They have to run the option, so that's a disadvantage of running the option. It takes so much time. Look how quickly Rip Shearer gets that kick team on. Mike Coughlin going to hit it from the 10. Uh-uh, wouldn't happen for him. Dutton turnover off the side of his foot. Took a backward bounce on Memphis all the way to their 37-yard line. That's where the Wolverine offense will start. A lot of football inside the big house. We come back at you on Pass Sports. Scott Dreisbach and the Wolverines operating in excellent field position after the uh, dismal punt. Tim Diakabatuka the the uh, battles inside the 35. Not about the 34-yard uh, line. Richard Hogan's on that Memphis defense from his linebacking spot along with Marvin Thomas making the hit on Bianca Batuka. Well, that was played well by Hogan's. That was played well to the weak side there. That can go anywhere from right side to the right end all the way around the left end. But they played it well. Memphis played that play. That's one of the one of the great plays for Michigan, and they played it well. Anthony Williams, Mercury Hayes, double wide right, Todd Richards wide left. We haven't seen Amani Tumor since he cut the last pass. Todd Richards needed to get down to about the 27 to keep the drive alive and got there on that quick hookup from Scott Dreisbach. Mike, you're right. Dreisbach is throwing that ball with some kind of tone on it. That was thrown, that wasn't thrown higher than eight feet high. Watch him right here. Boom! Right from the wrist and the hands. That's good receiving, good throwing. They can go up and down the field like that. Second reception, Todd Richards from Scott Dreisbach. As we said, Richards making his first game appearance of 95. First attempt for the 26. Howell and Bianca Matuka in the eye. Promise to Munga. make a cut with strength, keeping those legs driving inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. A quick nine for the junior out of Longueville, Quebec. I can see Mike Gittleson, their weight training coach right now. That was strong legs just churning and, and getting the extra yardage. Watch this. Now there's a hole there. <laughs> Tim gets the ball. He's right into the hole. But watch the last couple yards. Watch the strength here. Watch this. Watch this. Look at the strength. Gittleson, Mike Gittleson, weight training coach there some 18 years. 11 carries, 44 yards to Munga Bianca Batuka. This is a sophomore fullback on that quick trap, Chris Floyd. Floyd battled his way down to about the 15-yard line. Should be very, very close to that Wolverine first down. There's a Monty Toomer, George. We were talking about a moment ago. After he made that reception earlier on, it seemed like he took a pop-up in the shoulder area, and he hasn't returned since. No, that uh, that hurts, but they have. Todd Brooks gonna be, is in there being able to uh, play if he has to. Right now, since he's out, we, we go with two tight ends. Rob Vanderleest along with Jay Reimers, my tight ends. George Howell of the up man in front of Tim Diakabatuka from the 15. Rise by quick block. Post for Got a flag, and it's probably going to be interference down in the corner as Jocelyn Mercury Hayes trying to make the reception. Dorian Sutton, the junior, out of the Memphis secondary. And Sutton's hurt. I don't know if he uh, twisted his ankle stepping on Hayes's foot or what. Here he is. Good press inside now. Going outside, they're laying it up. Watch the feet get tangled up. And running into him. Sutton looked like he rolled that Defense. left ankle. Rolled that ankle. Automatic on. first down on the two-yard line. Dorian Sutton, the junior, being attended to by the Memphis training staff. Puts the Wolverines in excellent operating position to grab their second touchdown of this contest, potentially. First at goal from the two. Reamers with Vanderlees double tight. Tim didn't get there. That was pretty clever there with Hayes, though. He knew he had the ball and stopped or slowed down and made him run into him. Sutton had to run into him. He's looking up at the ball. 
Hayes not only a, a great player blocker but he's a smart player. Rod Mason making the hit here. It's Bianca Batuka trying to follow George Howell to get to that boundary and turn that corner. Wolverine's going to come up uh, still a couple yards shy so no gain for Bianca Batuka. Triple tights Reimers love Vanderlees Tuman Jumbo Michigan formation. Put the football down. Scramble for it at the two. The Memphis Tigers say they have it, and they do. Turnover, Michigan. Bianca Batuka and Dreisbach, not a good exchange. Well, it looks like uh, Bianca Batuka was reaching for the football on that one. You get looking in there where those linebackers are. Let's see it here on replay. No, no, no. Bianca Batuka had a good pocket. The ball just was laid out to him on his hip. He had a good pocket there. Well, the Memphis Tigers bite the bullet. Tony Williams. A big defensive tackle, 266 pound junior. Oh, they're bringing up the noise level in the big house now as the Wolverine crowd calling for that defense to get the job done. Frank Fletcher, the backup tailback on the call, trying to work off that right side. Jason Horn, Jared Irons on the stop for the Wolverines along with junior DB Clarence Thompson. Steve King now asserting himself like a leader out there. He leads the team in tackles. He's trying to get the crowd into the game and get everybody into the game. Watch number 27. Look at him, King. He's all pumped up. Steve King, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week for his efforts last week against Illinois. Second and nine now for Memphis from the Wolverine four. Frank Fletcher again never got started. Oh, that Wolverine defensive front, George, Jason Horn, Trent Zankowitz, getting tremendous penetration. That's how you win championships. You win them with defense. You, you have a little problem on offense. You fumble the football. You don't make it on fourth down. You're still winning by seven points. And you've got the game played in their, inside their five-yard line because you have strong, strong defense. Wolverines have squandered two opportunities inside the 15. Memphis with only three yards on the ground on 15 carries, minus three on 15 carries. Third and nine, holding out of the end zone. Threw it to his big tight end in the middle. Latching on to a Joel Paskey making his second reception of the year, the 254-pounder, but came up way short of the first down. Michigan will get it back. They love the defense in the big house. Yeah, so that's what they call winning uh, defense. You let them gain a few yards, but make them punt the football. Coughlin again going to boot it away. Mercury Hayes directing everybody to get away from it. This time Coughlin got the favorable bounce. Down to the 37 yard line. So Coughlin got a big one this time. 53 yards on his boot. Wolverines looking for their third in succession to start 95 on top of Memphis 7 up and when we get you back to the big house on pass. Here in East Lansing. Yes, after 15 years of being an assistant <laughs> to either Bo or Mo, now he's got his own program and starting off pretty darn good. That defense of his pretty darn good also. That's how you win those yards. championships. You've got to have great defense. They have that now. They've, they've relaxed a little bit. They should be able to put a drive on here. Running and throwing. Mercury Hayes, Tyrone Butterfield, the two wides, George Howard and Tim Bianca Batuka behind Scott Dreisbach. Dreisbach. Uh, play action. Watch it all to Mercury Hayes. Hayes! Killer catch. Off a deflection at the five-yard line. Oh, the magician of Mercury Hayes. Mercury Hayes, look at this play again. This is, I'm telling you, this is Sunday football. He made a catch in practice this week that was unbelievable. The ball was underthrown. Had it been thrown deeper, no one would have been near him. It's tip. Look at the concentration. What a football player. The senior out of Booker T. Washington High School, Houston, Texas. Concentration, athletic ability, Mercury Hayes. This one's going to get short-circuited before Tim Biakabatuka got started. 
Usually when the whistle is blown before the play it's something on offense usually movement of the offensive line probably a penalty against the University of Michigan. Anytime you see it anytime you see a play stop uh, before they complete it, it's usually an offensive play. Good ball. Ball start. Ball start offense. on the offense. Repeat first down. Lloyd Carr just saw that 58 yard hookup between Scott Dreisbach and Mercury Hayes take his Wolverines down to the five but now they're set back to the ten still looking at first down and goal from the ten yard line. Three grabs for 76 yards now for Mercury Hayes on this afternoon against the Memphis secondary first attempt from the ten Howell and Bianca Batuka in the eye behind Dreisbach. Tim Bianca Batuka into the end zone. Touchdown, Bianca Batuka in Michigan's Wolverines. That was great blocking up front. Uh, you won't see anybody near him on this run. Second touchdown of the afternoon, fifth touchdown of the year for Tamunga Bianca Tuka. Bianca Batuka make it 17 touchdowns now in his Wolverine career. Remy Hamilton out of the hole that Jay Reimers met. Bangs that P.A.T. dead through. Bianca Batuka. You like I that. practice that name so much I called my wife Bianca Batuka this morning. <laughs> How did Sally respond to that? Oh, she was happy. She was happy that I had this opportunity. Maybe that's the new name around the Perlis household for the lovely Mrs. Perlis. Don't go away. We're back to Ann Arbor. Wolverines have stretched the lead to 14 on Memphis. Ten yard Tim Biaka Batuka blast into the end zone behind Joe Marinero and Rod Payne. Although Rod Payne got dinged a little bit, banged up on the touchdown run. So we'll check on he. Just like Imani Toomer nicked a little bit earlier. Brian Davis back at his own goal line. The top return men in college football are waiting for the boot of Jay Feely who's got it teed up at the 35. Watch this Wolverine kick cover team as they love the flat in the football with all kinds of emotion for special team coach Jim Herman. Davis from the six. And a little bit of a crease. Did you hear the pads pop? You could hear it. Plastic on plastic as the Wolverine special teams Ernest Sanders Tyrone Noble taking down Brian Davis. You can hear him up here. There was a hole there only it closed so fast. Remember all those kids are fresh. Lloyd keeps those starters off those special teams. These other kids are just wanting to play so bad. They go down there with great enthusiasm. That's the only way you can cover. Here comes the touchdown. With no one around them. No one around them. Just great great offensive line blocking. Giving the Wolverines a 14 nothing cushion. Bernard Oden start notching right. Picks it right in the grasp of Jared Irons. Got it into the hands of Quitman Spalding, who stepped out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Ooh, Oden taking a, a risk there. Irons had him dead to rights. That that was a, a great ended up with a great play. It's a dangerous play. It's the only thing they had going for him if they did fumble it, it was going to go out of bounds. Here we go again. He's in the grass. It's all over. Yeah, late hit. 15 yards. Good call. You've got some outstanding officials in the Big Ten. They're not perfect. None of them are, but these, these men work hard at it. They come to practice. They come out in spring practice. They're pretty dedicated. Now, you never had any kind of heated conversations or altercations with referees, did you? Once in a while, they were usually <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, very diplomatic of you now up here. First attempt to the 45 after the late hit call on the Wolverine D. Odin, this drop. Got flushed out. Now fires into the middle. His pass is caught. The reception made by Ryan Roskelly. Roskelly took the quick hit right away as Roskelly ran through his route, saw his quarterback in trouble, came back to the football. Watch Roskelly here. Crossing patterns are the ones that, 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 that's not, it's a broken play, running across. And that takes away from some of the ability that Michigan has to unload on them. They like them to, to be there in a standing position where they can really crack on them. 
Ross Kelly, as you see, the top receivers on this ball club. Ryan caught three last week in the loss to Memphis State. Second and fourth in the third. before the Wolverines could get on it but did you see the charge of outside linebacker Mike Elston who had Bernard Oden dead to rights wrapped him up and threw him to the turf he might be hurt bad he was he was bent over like a pretzel you'll see before that before Elston that we had a big holding penalty on the defensive end of Michigan I think it was for Zell look at this that's a tough, tough hit. His leg was was really wrenched there. Look at that. You can see the whole uh, upper torso of Bernard Oden going one way, and then the body bending back the other way. And torso and uh, Oden obviously being attended to now by that Memphis training staff. Again, it, the athletes in Michigan can put on the football field in situations, George. I mean, this is a, a dream come true for Greg Madison, what he can do with so many uh, players that want playing time in situations uh, like this. Elson, a, a fine, fine, fine football player. Behind him, Bowens, number six, when he comes in there, just a freshman from Orchard Lake St. Mary's, another kid that can play that position well. But that showed Elston's speed when he caught up with them. Doesn't look like the leg is as bad as it looked on the tape there. Mike Elston, a uh, third-year sophomore, redshirt sophomore, at, as I mentioned earlier, out of St. Mary's Memorial, a very strong program down around the Lima area in Ohio. As you see Bernard Oden being uh, walking off with a little bit of help from the Memphis training staff. So Joe Borich, who has seen time today, and last week against Mississippi State back at it at the quarterback spot. Got to come in and look at third and nine right away with Jaron Irons and Clint Copenhagen showing blitz. They will cross it off. Wanted to set up screen into the middle to Darius Blevins. But again, that Michigan rush with Joaquin Fazell, Glenn Steele, Trent Zekowitz all over boards. Mike, that's a rush. That's, that wasn't a blitz. It looked like a blitz the way those linemen are coming in there. And it's going to be it's going to be a lot quicker even in the second half. These guys are fresh. There's a lot of people playing. Mike Coughlin will go to that man, Mercury Hayes, standing back at his own 15-yard line. This time, Coughlin got it to turn over. Hayes at the 17. Oh, Mercury took a lead as he got stood up right away. When that special teams work for the Memphis Tigers, Chris Smith, Smith, the senior cornerback, putting a big lick on the senior from Houston. Well, it'll be interesting here to see what uh, Lloyd's going to do. He's going to either try to get out of here with 14 points. I think he'll, he'll run the football. If he does get near midfield, then he'll use his timeouts and try to get another score, at least a field goal. But if things don't work real well, I think he's going to run some time off that clock and go into this halftime at least with a 14 to nothing lead. This is what's going through his mind right now, trying to anticipate with 342, both teams having three timeouts left. And they love their Michigan football, certainly here in Ann Arbor from 2 to 92. Detroit Lions looking for their first win of the 95 season. They'll try to get that for Michigan sports. As we said, they start them young around Mason Blue football in Ann Arbor Town. Scott Dreisbach, 8 of 10 for 115 yards, now operating about 85 yards away from the end zone with 342 left. And he'll start Tim Biakamatuka on that inside handoff. Bianca Batuka battled his way out over the 20, but we got a late flag that flew in. Going to be a hold on the Wolverine. This is someone of a problem here now. Only offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat. First down. Backed up into your own end of the field inside your 10. All Lloyd right now wants to do is get out of here with a 14 point lead. He doesn't want to have a turnover. He doesn't want to gamble. He'll probably run the football and see how much time he can get off that clock. Now you have to remember Memphis is going to make them punt the ball if they can hold them from getting the first down here so they can rush and try to block the punt. That's what's going through Memphis's head right now. Stop them. Use your timeouts if you have to. 
give them a chance to punt, try to block it, and get the ball in the end zone. Scott Dreisbach now dealing with 93 yards of real estate if he wants to put points on the board. Uh, remember the position he was in two weeks ago today in the fourth quarter for the Wolverines trailing against Virginia. He and Mercury Hayes delivered. First and 19 now. We'll call it the eight. Weimers now with most motion offensive line again moving that's why it's a dead ball play left guard Damon Denson got hit trying to pull out early yep Denson the young man who's made the switch from defense to offense here this year for Lloyd Carr just a step Keep early going. trying to get out on that off trap repeat for some now we're back on the three yard line still three minutes 28 seconds three timeouts left on both teams see Amani Toomer who we talked about is up with Hellman on Toomer right there wearing number 18 in the middle of that Michigan congregation Amani got nicked a little bit on the second reception of the day that inside the first screw there out over the 14 close to the 15 yard line so hitting that inside trap the Akabatuka behind the blocks of again Payne and Marinero and Denson the Akabatuka was on a mission there that was a big game that gets them way out to the 15 yard line the clock's moving Memphis isn't sure yet they want to use a timeout if they do and they get this ball near midfield it could cost them a field goal Tim the Akabatuka couple of touchdowns on the day Second and 13 now, Dreisbach to put it up. Throwing that out route, got Todd Richards got over the 20 to about the 23-yard line. Wolverine's still going to be about uh, four yards shy to keep this drive alive. A little bad break there, getting out of bounds. He was tight on the sidelines. He had no choice. He got knocked out of bounds. See it right here. He's right on the sidelines. Catches the football. He's cornered in there and just knocked out of bounds. 177 pound senior. Good look at Todd Richards out of Reading, Michigan. First game action, 95. Third and five now from the 22. Quick drop, showing blitz. Richards had it go through his hands as Dry's box pass, a little bit too tall for the six footer. Well, Memphis is going to get an opportunity to get their hands on it here one more time as we approach the two minute mark in the first half. Well, the penalties uh, stop the clock. Uh, the out of bounds stops the clock. The incompleted pass stops the clock. So there's 2:31 left with three timeouts. That's a lot of time. Nate DeLong standing back at his 10-yard line with a line drive it toward Ryan Roskelly. Oh, DeLong got the good bounce. DeLong is lucky. That was a low. That was low. And he caught that Ross Kelly on the run. It could have been a big return, but it, it just wasn't near him, and it bounced, and it was a great bounce for Michigan. Now with the kind of defense Michigan has, they're in pretty good shape here, ball at the 25-yard line. Nate DeLong got a 52-yard kick out of that. Is uh, the roll extremely favorable? So Memphis going back to work, and our uh, stat man in the booth, Ron Glassnap, saying uh, that the Memphis ground attack has been a little bit poultry today, minus five on 17 carries against that Wolverine D. Off play action, Odin is back, swinging it out to his fullback, Darius Blevins. Blevins got chopped down as he crossed the 30-yard line. Steve King, the leading tackler in this Wolverine ball club, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week on the stop of Blevins. Odden back in the ball game. They'll let them have those things. That moves the clock a minute and 57 seconds now. They're not worried about them gaining five, six, seven yards. That's what you call a head football. Wolverines on top by two touchdowns as you see what their defensive front seven has done to this Memphis rushing game still in the negative. Odin option right with a little bit of reading in front of them across that 35 and a first down. Odin rambling out eight yards worth will Carr, along with Rashid Simmons on the Michigan stop there goes Memphis using one of their first uh, timeouts two of them left they want to save one if they get an opportunity for a field goal minute and 37 seconds
second time today Bernard Oden has been down George want to ask you about Lloyd Carr coming into this situation here I think a lot of people were downplaying maybe what Michigan's 95 season would be all about but he mentioned continuity and stability saying that it's always been a part of Michigan football and that's exactly what I intend to maintain I'd say by the results of the first two contests and the way these kids are playing for him he's off in good fashion he is off in good fashion but you know the, the big thing you see it with with the Steelers you see it every every place if you've got good defense you're going to have a championship team if you just don't turn that ball over. First to 10 from the 38. Orton on the pitch. Blevins having trouble picking it up. Wolverines all over him, drilling him out of bounds. Charles Woodson, Rashid Simmons, Mike Elston all on the hit. Joaquin Fiesel there getting a piece of it too. Now Blevins just uh, had problems picking up the football and got drilled. Fazell, this is what we talk about when you're in, in Pop Warner. Someone hold him up, the other one clean him up, and that's what Fussell did. Watch this. Watch Fussell come in here, number 90. Watch him right at the end of the play here. This is what you remember at halftime when someone... There, that last lick. Two of them hold him up, the third one polishes him off. Keep going back to it, George, but I, I think that the last couple of years, do you think that the Michigan defense, uh, we don't want to say they were soft, but maybe lacked the emotion and lacked the uh, want to get to the football than they had in previous years? It seems like it's back under defensive coordinator Greg Madison now. You talk to uh, Bo Schembecker, you talk to Jerry Hanlon, you talk to Terrell Burton, you talk to the trainers. You talk to the equipment people, John Falk, you talk to the weight training coach, you talk to any of them, and they say these kids are happy, they're playing as a team. I haven't seen them before this practice, but there was as good practice as I've seen in a long time this week. Second and 11 from the 37. Boy, that alternating quarterback situation continuing for Memphis. Joe Borich is back, swinging it out. Got Darius Blevins out here in the flat. Run out of bound in front of the Michigan bench. Chuck Winters on the hit along with Clarence Thompson. Chuck Winters, the Wolverine free safety. He shuttled back and forth between the free and the strong. And defensive backfield coach Vance Bedford, George, says this guy is just a hitter that loves to be around the football. Oh, he loves to hit. And having a week off, you know he's hungry. That's what you always had to do is meet one of these tough guys that had a week off. The winners did not go last week against Illinois. A little bit mixed up. Third and eight for Orange. He's got Pittman Spalding up here close to a first down. Hit Spalding on the numbers as he ran his way out to about the 49-yard line, which was the line to make. That was that was good rush, excellent rush by the down lineman. The problem is, is we're playing a little bit off here. There's a long ways to go. This is what you call a head football. Let the clock run, catching the ball back here on his 40-yard line, getting out of bounds. It looks like it might be short, um, again, like a half a yard. Quitman Spalding, young man who uh, racked up 91 yards, averaging uh, about four and a half per carry last week in the loss to Mississippi State. He and Frank Fletcher, the two tailbacks that carry most of the load for head coach Rip Shear. See how close this is to half a yard. Be, yeah. And this is what Memphis, now what are they going to do? Are they going to gamble and go for it? If ball's at midfield, or are they going to punt it? They're going to go for it. Now they're changing. They're going to minute and 10 left in the second quarter so obviously if you don't get it you're letting Michigan operate with only a half a football field with all their timeouts they're going to go with the option it looks like Odin's back in there fourth down half a yard Rip Shear says I'm down 14 nothing we need points on the board 70 seconds left in the first half fourth and a little bit less than one Odin lined up in the power eye. Referee David Whitvet coming in to say a word to him, getting the chain set over there in the far side. Fourth and one for the 48. Odin with option left. Going to keep. Got there. First down as he stretched it out to the midfield stripe. The line he needed to make was the 49, so give Bernard Odin the tough two in a first down for Memphis. All right, the option, 
All he needed was a half a yard. Going to keep the ball. Looks like he predetermined that. And that's just good athletic ability. Good running by Olden. Just good running by the quarterback. See the five maize and blue shirts there, though. Gang tackling led by Elston and Sweat. First to ten from the 50 now. Clock running with 50 seconds. Here comes the Let's go. Oh, we got a piece of Odin who still hit Quickman Spalding. Odin again took a huge shot as Clarence Thompson came off that corner like a shot and putting a Wolverine helmet into the number three of Bernard Odin. Watch this. Watch this replay. Watch Thompson time this up. You can't see it. It's close up. But he's coming from your right side. Watch it. Here he comes. Great hit and thud right to the ground. Great at getting the ball off. It shows a lot of courage by Odin. A lot of courage. Quitman Spalding, he and Darius Blevins, two of the top receivers on this ball club, they like to throw to the backs, and that's what they've had to do today, trying to uh, avoid the heat of this rush of the Wolverines. Wolverine down is big William Carr. Carr out of Dallas, Texas, the junior who is vying for playing time with Jason Horn in the middle of that Wolverine front. Well, there are so many people playing on the defensive line. They can get a break. They are fresh, and they're going to be fresh here. There's 37 seconds left, only one timeout. Memphis, if they're going to try a field goal, needs to use that timeout. You figure it's going to take seven seconds to get a play, but then the problem is, is the clock's running if they don't get a first down. Bernard Oden now 7 to 10 for 58 yards. Look at the young man. He's been down a, a couple of times today. Had to be helped off. You see him trying to shake the cobwebs out as this Michigan defense continues oh, to come after him like there's a, a big red X on that number three. He's I know that. he played in a football game oh, today, George. Oh, yeah. They'll all know that. They'll wake up tomorrow. Everybody will be sore. But their defensive coordinator for Michigan, Greg, uh, Matheson he must be a happy man the way these guys play defense and then his linebacker coach Jim Harriman Bradley Hope with the defensive end and Vance Bradford I know I was standing on the sidelines and uh, Jerry Hanlon was bragging about Bedford the nice job he's doing with their secondary 37 seconds left in the first half a football on the 47 yard line of Michigan for Bernard Oden in the Memphis offense looking at second and seven in a 14 nothing hole. Odin with pressure. Dumped it into the middle, in and out of the hands of Quitman Spalding. Spalding heard the footsteps of Jared Irons and Clint Copenhaver. And I don't blame him. The way these guys uh, come up, that's exactly what Michigan wants to do. Let them catch it short, give them the big hit, try to knock the ball loose or keep the clock running. Only 33 seconds, one timeout. Third down. Sophomore Bernard Oden after that incompletion that Spalding couldn't handle now 7 of 11 for 58 yards. He's looking at third oh, and seven now. Referee David Whitman stops it. Play clock running down. Oden's going to go over to talk about it with head coach Rip Shear. You've that, got Michigan, Michigan State football on pass throughout this 1995 season. As we talked about, we'll be in Ann for you on pass in the big house in all of its Saturday afternoon splendor with 105 George they like to say around here that's a May sun in a blue sky did you like hearing that when you came in here no <laughs> Ron Kramer was just over to say hello I didn't know I had so many friends here at Michigan the great great day was to see Don Canna mm -hmm. he is quite a guy he's the one that did a lot for this big Ten. 0 for 7 on third down conversion opportunities are the Memphis Tigers they'll try it again Bernard Oates from the 47. Over with that quick drop. He's got his tight end, George Pesky, He's going to get knocked down by the true freshman, Rod Woodson and Big Will Carr. How about Carr going from his defensive tackle spot out to help Woodson out there on the perimeter? Michigan called their timeout, anticipating them punting, want a chance to, to block the punt. And that's exactly what happens. You talk about uh, knowing what's going on on the field. That was Steve King. They called that timeout. They knew he had four yards to go. As soon as he hit the ground, he called the timeout. That's alert football. What they want to do is make them punt and take a shot at blocking the punt. There's only 25 seconds left. If they do rush, uh, rough them, if they don't have a timeout left, they probably can't kick a field goal from the 30-yard line. I don't think they have that strong of a leg. 
that would give them a 47 yarder. So Michigan's going to do a little bit of gambling here, I think. Rush, try to block the punt and pick it up and go all the way. And the Wolverines with one probable opportunity to get their football, uh, to get their hands on the football here again before the second quarter expires. These coaches are thinking two or three plays ahead of time and they're relaying that to their their players and Steve King right on it. He didn't lose a second when he called that timeout, so they'd have this opportunity to block the punt. Anthony Williams got a punt block last week for the Wolverines. He returned it into a touchdown. For that he earned Big Ten special teamer of the week. Mercury Hayes will settle back inside his 10. We'll see what Mike Coughlin does with this. Often standing at his own 44. Here they come. Hung it up short. Mercury Hayes telling his Wolverine to back out of there. Hand put on it. 19 yard line. So with 17 seconds left in the first half, Michigan with 81 yards to negotiate with one timeout left. This is when you hear. Uh, you won't hear it here at uh, University of Michigan, but there'll be places where uh, coaches want to get in the locker room, make their corrections, get things done, and we'll flop on the ball now just to get the half over. They're too deep in their territory to try to score in one play, and at times the fans don't appreciate it. They want to see uh, air the ball out, but they don't have much invested. Jansen Runyon at the tackles. Rod Payne over the football, Marinero, Damon Denson for the Wolverines. Up front, Scott Dreisbach going to keep it on the ground. Tim Diaco Batuta on that inside trap battles his way close to the 30-yard line. The Wolverines will get the clock stopped here on the first down run of 11 by Diaco Batuka. Now the clock will start as soon as David Whitvet, the referee, gets those chains all set up over there. Only now 10 seconds in the clock running here toward the end of the first half. Dreisbach, does he have time to get one more playoff? He does. Another trap. The Akabatuka has found some open spaces. Out over the 45 to the 47-yard line. So a 17-yard run from Tim Biakabatuka will end the first 30 minutes of football. No go away. A lot more coming up. Biakabatuka with 94 first half yards and a couple of touchdowns as the Wolverines of Lloyd Carr on top of Memphis, 14-0. We're back to the big house on Passports. One of the great traditions and spectacles of college football, the Michigan Marching Band entertaining at halftime as we welcome you back to Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. The Wolverines on top of the Memphis Tigers, 14-0 as Lloyd Carr looks to go to 3-0 in this his initial season as the head coach of Michigan football. Certainly hope you're enjoying it on Pass Sports along with the former head coach of the Michigan State Spartans, George Perlis, Michael Regai, George, Michigan on top 14-0. However, let's face it, it could be more. They've been thwarted down inside the 10-yard line twice, but yet that defense has been absolutely magnificent in rendering Memphis pretty much helpless on the offensive side. Great defense, and that's what carried them through that first half. Sure, they had some great offensive plays, but that defense never got them in trouble. They're a great defensive team. Now what they need is to get the offense going and put some more points on that the second half. What's happened is that Lloyd is wanting to run the football. He has run the football. He's thrown the football. He's doing both, but he did want to establish that running game. He almost has as many yards in the first half this game as he had in the whole game the last two games. Wolverine certainly as we talk about looking to extend it to three and oh they've got 30 more minutes of football to try to derail Memphis and do that that's why you're here don't go anywhere we've got more halftime coming up by the Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor Wolverines on top by two touchdowns on pass sports. Throwing in excess of 100,000 inside the big house, Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. Join the Wolverines. 14 0 lead over Memphis at the break. Michael Regai, along with George Perlis. Enjoyed it with you on Pass Sports. Started with defense, George Perlis. How about the pro type play Charles Woodson, the freshman, made on this INT? What an interception. He goes in front, almost impossible to catch it. He's on his back. He goes in front of him with his arms, catches the ball, and trying to gallop into the end zone. 
Uh, like we said before, that's a big, big time play. First interception of his Michigan career, it led to this. Tomunga Biaka Patuka finding the crease, dancing in for six. Biaka Patuka, what a runner. Strong, like we talked before. All that work he's done in the weight room, you can tell it in his legs. He's got the legs that jitter, and he also has those powerful legs. I like it. They had a 7 nothing lead to the Michigan Wolverines. They uh, blunted in another opportunity inside the red zone. But here's a look at Biaka Patuka's second touchdown. And, oh, he had a hole big enough for George Perlis to run through to get to the That's zone. right, about anyone. That was great blocking in the offensive line. He'll be the first one to tell him that Sunday and congratulate his offensive lineman. That's what makes for a team. That's a true team effort. One time he breaks the tackle running, and one time the hole's there. Two to, to Munka Biaka Patuka touchdowns as Michigan at top 14 nothing as we start the second half. Jay Feely moving down to Brian Davis from his own end zone. Davis got a little bit of a burst and out over the 25 where Memphis will start with their first possession of the third. Let's take a look at the numbers from the first 30 minutes. Michigan so very dominant on the ground with 94 rushing yards in there, George. The only the four from Memphis, that defensive front seven, absolutely sterling. Right, well, that's what Lloyd wanted to do. He almost has as many yards rushing now as he had in the other two games. This Memphis team, though, you give Davis a lot of credit. He really ran up in there. Bernard Oden, he's taken a couple wallops of the first half. Back to start this third quarter, quarterback in Rip Shears, Memphis Tigers. Whitman Spalding on the first carry of the third. He ran into Jared Irons as he came across the line of scrimmage. Irons got the takedown with the Wolverine D. Playing a little safe there. This is when Memphis has to be careful. If they play loose football now, if they have turnovers, with as strong as this Michigan, Michigan team is, they're going to have a problem because Michigan is out there like it was the first play of the game. They're fresh. They play a lot of people. They're strong. They're big. Memphis wearing a little bit. You can see right now. Eight rushes and eight passes. Play selection on first down for Memphis here in the first half and first play of the third. Oden trying to throw that out route. Clarence Thompson with the defensive play as Thompson had coverage on Brian Powell in front of the Michigan bench. Well, Thompson, again, that was a big play. These defensive backs hit, but their coverage is excellent. Clarence Thompson, the junior out of Martin Luther King High School in the city of Detroit, played some free safety, played some strong safety. Now you see him sitting down on this field corner. Charles Woodson in the corner on the other side. Marcus Ray and Steve King, the safeties, will set the front seven in a minute. Third and seven from the 28. Oden to put it up. Well, they, they uh, fooled him a little bit. They pressed, everybody pressed with double zone back there, two safeties back there, and then Michigan came out of the looking of a man-for-man -man defense into a zone. And so uh, it was a wasted play by Memphis. It was disguised very, very well by Michigan. Odin wanted Chancey Carr. Overthrew him. Results in Memphis having to uh -oh. kick it away. Hoffman. Got the good roll inside the 30. Mercury Hayes running away from it down about the 28-yard line. So Mike Coughlin now angling away from Michigan's single safety, Mercury Hayes. I don't know if they're punting that way on purpose, but it's not a bad idea if they are to keep Hayes from having that ball in his hand. They're still getting the yardage out of it. They're kicking it short where there isn't any return. Scotty Dreisbach, 9 to 12 in that first half, 123 yards. Flawless, didn't throw the INT. No touchdown passes. It's Tim Bianca, but gets the call to start the second half for the Wolverines, working over that left side of the Michigan offensive line that features John Runyon and Damon Denson. Bianca Batuka got six. Let's call it second and four. If you didn't know better, you'd think Bianca Batuka had one leg shorter than the other. He just throws that leg out there, cuts, goes around the end. That was only a five-yard gain, but that was a great run. They played it well, Memphis. Bianca Batuka with his first 100-yard rushing contest in 1995. He's right at the century mark. True freshman Clarence Williams in the backfield. Reisbach had a lot of movement happening on both fronts. Michigan's and Memphis's defensive front. Reisbach surged ahead about the 37-yard line. Now we'll wait to see where the flags are coming from. I think what happened is uh, they caught Memphis in the neutral zone. They, the center snapped the ball in the zone, and they got what they could out of it. They're going to, I think, Memphis is going to be uh, minus five yards here on this penalty. 
And that's exactly Outside. what happened. Defense. Defense got in the Five neutral zone, and the center has. The, first out. the center's taught any time they see a defensive lineman get into the neutral zone just to snap the ball. The quarterback always has to be ready for that, and that's what happened. That was just an automatic first down because of the five-yard penalty. Scott Dreisbach, red shirt freshman out of Mishawaka, Indiana, trying to do a number on Rip Shears, Memphis defense. Some ask, how did he ever get away from the Golden Dome on first and ten? Williams, the freshman never had a handle on it, put it on the ground. Turnover, Michigan, coming up with the fumble recovery for Memphis. Marquise Bowling, the redshirt freshman. Clarence Williams, not boating well for his second opportunity for the true freshman here in Michigan Stadium. Well, Clarence uh, just didn't keep his eye on the ball that time. He's a freshman. He's got great ability, so... You, you're certainly going to get him right back in the game so he doesn't worry about that play. He'll come back and get a bigger one. Second turnover of the contest for the Wolverines. Bianca Batuka, now Williams, both tailbacks with a fumble. Odin on first and ten. Tailback Darius Brothers running hard off that right side. Jared Irons on the tackle for the Wolverines after a Blevins gain of about four. Well, one of their better running plays. We got hooked uh, our... Uh, Outside linebacker got hooked, and the way we went. Blevins five and call it second and five, as there's the young man out of the Woodlands, Texas, Gerald Irons, Jared Irons, the son of Gerald Irons, a former Oakland Raider, Cleveland Brown linebacker of NFL fame. This direction. The tailback Quintman Spaulding. Spaulding got a couple as he worked his way down to the 30-yard line off that pile on the bottom for Michigan. Rasheed Simmons and Jared Irons. A little sloppy that play. It was a counter and the, the back uh, didn't move quick enough and it looked a little sloppy. The quarterback felt kind of silly standing there holding the football. Third carries for just three yards for Quinton Spalding, the tailback who rung up 91 yards against the Mississippi State defense last week. Third and three. Michigan's defense has held Memphis without a third down conversion. 0 for 8 in the first half. Delay a game as Bernard Oden, not aware of that play clock that uh, ran out and hit zeros on him. It'll cost Memphis five. Ball. Delay of game, offense. Oden, a gutty kid there. Been taking hits all day, stays in there. Now, falls asleep a little bit on the 25 second clock. Don't forget now, this is his first season mm -hmm. playing his second game. He's a fine athlete, but he hasn't played before, and there's a lot going on in his mind, especially at quarterback. Last week, they ran the football for 116 yards against the Mississippi State defense, finding the Wolverine defense much tougher to negotiate. Third and eight from the 35. Starting option right. This is Frank Fletcher on the pitch. Fletcher took a pop. From Marcus Ray and from Will Carr as he got inside the 30, down to about the 28 yard line, but it's going to leave Rip Shearer and Memphis a couple yards shy of their first down opportunity. Good looking option that was, a good pitch, and there was some running room there. The Michigan at that, that time had the safety. You'll see the safety come up on the pitch. All the way from the secondary. Here he comes, here he comes. Now he's got the, the pitch, and that's hard, hard to do in the open field. Fourth down and two, down 14 nothing early third. Rip Shearer says we're going for it. Option right over. Got that first down, a real close to it. He cut it back into the middle, didn't see much of a crease, but seemed to battle his way inside that 27-yard line to keep the drive alive. I think he's got it, but only by inches. That was that was some kind of effort. This is always depends on the official spotting. They gave it to him, and I think it was a good call. He was the defense covered it. Watch the defense here. They have them, but this is just good running by Odin. Look, watch him. Watch him. One. Gutty kid. Gutty kid. Rob Sweat. Rasheed Simmons on the takedown. And Bernard Odin picks up that fourth down conversion. First and ten from the 26. Odin. Into the middle to Whitman Spalding, and he had it picked off. Rob 
sweat on the Michigan interception as Oden took another lick as he was trying to deliver the football. First interception of his Michigan career for the linebacker for Pennsylvania, Rob Sweat. Well, he had a, a blitz coming in there with Thompson, batted ball, interception. Oden was really down in the dumps after that one, laying on the ground. He's worked so hard. It's important for this Memphis team, what they wanted, if nothing else, a field goal, not to have a goose egg up there, not to be shut out. Second Michigan interception of the day. Charles Woodson got one in the first half. Now Rob Sweat. Wolverine football at their own 27. Reimersma in shallow motion. This is Eddie Davis, the senior out of King High in Detroit. His first opportunity of the day. Up close to the 30-yard line. We'll give Eddie Davis three. Davis came in, George, in the Virginia game and gave the Michigan run game in the second half a little bit of a boost. Matter of fact, got their first touchdown to get him on the board. That's right, and right here he ran with enthusiasm. He saw Williams go in there and get his chance and have a fumble. Now Davis came in there and wanted to prove something. Here's your, your replay. He ran a little high that time, but he's an enthusiastic kid that usually comes through when they need him. Well, Eddie Davis with the one carry. And now back next to Lloyd Carr for the time being. Second and seven from the 30. Jim Diakabatuka got stood up. He tried to bounce it to the right side. Tremendous competition in that backfield. Bianca Batuka, Davis, Williams, Howard. I mean, that's a lot of people. So when they get a chance, they want to do well. Here we go with Howard in there now. So you have three plays, three different tailbacks. That's competition. It's always been the case here, too, at Michigan. Unfortunately, George, for Clarence Williams, you put the ball on the ground. There are people behind you then that are going to get their repetitions after that. Right. Clarence will get another chance. Third and six from the 31 now for Griesbach in the Michigan offense. Seven-step drop. He's got screen right set up. Chris Howard. Howard with a cut to the 35. Tried to stretch it. The line to make was the 37. He's going to be very, very close. Tough running after the reception for the sophomore from Louisiana, Chris Howard. Chris Howard jumped right over the pile there and, and uh, got himself a first down. Big first down deep in Michigan's territory. Now they're out here on the 38 yard line they can open up their game plan go with a play pass get something big here and then pound it in oh george you gotta love that he took the hit four yards shy of that first down and continued to battle it first michigan conversion on third down today wolves now one of seven drives block gonna go right back got a crease along that left side Got the block from John Runyon. Thomas Gwines in there also with a kick out block for the Wolverines. Gwines getting his first playing time here in the second half. 288 pound tackle that started quite a bit in his Michigan career. Chris Howard, 5'10", 208. Chris Floyd, number seven, another young kid, 6'1", 222. They're all getting an opportunity. Pretty clever by the Michigan staff, getting everybody in there. Rod Mason, 6'3", 240-pound senior, is the Memphis Tiger on the ground. Again, Memphis, in case you're just joining us, playing in the Conference USA now, 1995. They'll start football, actually, as a conference with the likes of Cincinnati and Houston and Tulane and Louisville and Southern Miss beginning in the 1996 season. But, George, I have a feeling that this is going to be the make of a, a pretty strong football conference. Those ball clubs uh, down south, for the most part, starting to make themselves known on the recruiting trail. That's right. With all the parity going on, it's going to be a good conference. There's enough players to go around. Wolverines now with Tim Biakamatuka with a bolt of that hitting the century mark on the left side. Second and four from the third. Dreisbach threw it too tall for Jay Reimersma. Reimersma on that tight end drag in the middle in the coverage for that Memphis defense, Dorian Sutton, who took a, uh, a ding in the first half along with their strong safety, Jerome Woods. Oh, Dreisbach just overthrew it. That was where it was vulnerable, that 18-yard void area we talked about in the first half off the play pass action. The linebackers weren't getting deep enough. It was open there, but it was just overthrown. We still have not seen a Monty Toomer here in the second half. The senior caught a couple in the first half and got banged up in the shoulder area. Hayes and Richards the wides on third and four. Blitz coming. Drives back, beats pressure, and then threw it too low for Chris Howard in front of the Michigan bench. That'll turn it over on the incompletion. 
That's all right. The drives buck was dead in there. He eluded the rush, got rid of the football. They'll punt the ball. Uh, it could have been a sack. It could have been a fumble. So there was a good disguise blitz that Memphis threw at him. No one in the Michigan team saw it coming. Rush in Marquise Bowling, who recovered that Clarence Williams fumble a moment ago, was coming hard from Rise Box left. Ross Kelly driven deep back inside the 15 yard line. As great. the boot knocks out at about the 14 yard line. So long, great punt. The Wolverines have Memphis pinned. Wolverines on top of the Tigers 14 nothing when we get you back to the big house on Pass Sports. Saturday on Pass Sports double dip of local college football action at noon you'll see the Michigan State Spartans take on the Louisville Cardinals exclusively on pass and it's 3.30 it's a live Met contest between the University of Akron and Gary Blackney and his Bowling Green Falcons plus Saturday night you've got Tiger Baseball too, Michigan State and Mac football next Saturday only on Pass Sports and then the Texas Rangers in Tiger Stadium all of that on the source for Michigan Sports Pass Sports. Michael Regai, George Perlis with you inside Michigan Stadium. Wolverines on top of Memphis 14 nothing after the Paul Paris Terrace group. Listen to the Michigan defense pop the pads again as they gang tackle Quitman Spaulding, Steve King, Jared Irons, Rob Sweat. George, I love the sounds of college football as much as the sights. You're not supposed to hear that sound as far up as we are. <laughs> what a hit. What great defense. Everyone. That time there was nine people on the ball. Watch the replay here. You hear that? I mean, that's youth. A lot of exuberance in getting to the football on the Michigan D. Only one for Spalding, second and nine. This is Darius Blevins. Blevins got tripped up by Trent Zinkowitz. Zinkowitz, that defensive tackle out of St. Ignatius in Cleveland. Tripped up Blevins before he could get started. Jared Irons helped secure it. We had a flag come in late. Preliminary looks like a hold on Memphis. Zinkowitz is on his way to becoming an All-American. That last time, they slanted right into Memphis's option. Right into it. Here, look at all the people coming in. Holding on the offense. Decline. Third down. Everybody's getting a chance to play. Young man we talked about, Trent Zankowitz, all American possibilities for this guy. Certainly one of the bellwethers of Michigan's defense. 11 tackles on the year, a couple of sacks for the 270 pounder. Certainly a young man who opposing offenses know all about around the Big Ten. Another third down conversion opportunity for Memphis. Third and eight from the 16, over at the straight drop. In and out of the hands of Quitman Spalding, who dropped another one. That's a couple, two or three drops for the tailback for Memphis. They'll give the football back to the Michigan Wolverines as the big house crowd in excess of 105,000 lets the defense hear about it again as they continue to pitch this shutout. Beautiful defense. The fans appreciate it. Mike Coughlin. Standing inside his own five, Mercury Hayes near the midfield stripe from Michigan. Again, that football taking a backward hop on Mike Coughlin. Finally down at the 44-yard line. Now that's where Michigan will start their third possession here in the third quarter. And obviously, Mike Coughlin, George Perlis, has been told, keep it away from the Comet out of Houston, Mercury Hayes. Right, they're giving up some yardage when he doesn't do it exactly right, but they don't want that touchdown with Hayes catching that on the run and going all the way. Anthony Williams, Todd Richards now, the Wolverine dual receiver set. Howell and Bianca Batuka work in the backfield for Dreisbach. This is Tim Bianca Batuka. Got a little bit of a seat. Bulls his way down inside the 36 yard line, close to the 35. A burst of nine yards on first down for touchdown Tim, who's found the end zone twice today. Touchdown Tim must have some kind of strength in those legs. Again, pulling people. He goes four or five yards after he has people hanging on him. Second down. 
Tim Biaka Batuka eight keep it even Tim Biaka Batuka over the hundred yard mark today as the Wolverines have rung up hundred and ten on the ground could be a free play here on second and two stay with Biaka Batuka oh he got stood up that Memphis defense rose up as Biaka Batuka hit that hole Memphis's defensive charge up front led by Tony Williams 266 pound junior had some help from linebacker Dan Bonner big defensive play I don't know if they got the first down yes they did right now Fishers are pretty good they don't uh, when they know it's a first down or not they don't waste our time by bringing the chains in when this group has courage and they're calm the way they see them. Looks like a good group of officials. It's been it's been uh, officiated very well so far. Mark Campbell now joins Jay Reimers. Mark Campbell, one of the uh, four tight ends that Lloyd Carr employs. Motion from Williams. Rise back to throw. Going post. Hayes. A little bit too much for the Merck in the corner of the end zone. Well, that was a, a free blitzer coming in there. And Dreisbach had no choice but unloaded early. He took a hit as it was. It was a, a, a miss up, a, a mix up on the pickup, and so uh, he had unloaded. Scott Dreisbach now 10 of 16 for 130 yards as Mercury Hayes stretching out the no avail in the corner of the end zone. Hayes already with. Couple of touchdowns, big ones in that Virginia game this year on second and ten. Draw Biaka Matuka. Biaka Matuka up that sideline and finally shouldered out of bounds at about the 13 yard line. Tamunga Biaka Matuka, you see the speed when he was able to get to the corner, 20 yard burst from the junior from Quebec. Ah, the speed is one thing. Everything, he's got it all, but that move, the moves he has. Moving on corners, great athletes. Watch this. Boom, boom. And then he, he he doesn't slow down to make those moves. Good pursuit from the backside, knocking him out of bounds. He span finally got touchdown. Tim knocked out of bounds. 22 totes for 132 yards now for Biaka Batuka with those two TDs. First to 10 from the 13. Counter play, Biaka Batuka. Timmy on that counter tray got down to about the 10 yard line. We'll give him three off the bottom of that pile again. Linebacker Dan Bonner for Memphis's Tigers. George, they've got him all lathered up and greased up and uh, ready to go with the carry load of that Michigan running game today. Well, I think what Lloyd like to do is get him, get this touchdown, get uh, Tim in that end zone, Bianca Batuka in that end zone, and then rest him. Reamers Muff Vanderlees double tight end set with only Todd Richards wide. Reisbach keeping with Bianca Batuka. Tim battling his way down to about the seven. You know that is going to come back and be negated. That area of the football field when the flag comes out always denotes a hold on the offense. Well, it's the umpire that threw it in there, and that's all he's looking for is holding. He's watching the center, both guards, both tackles. Two defensive ends and two defensive tackles, so that's going to be a 10 yard penalty against Michigan holding. That's the toughest thing in the world to call. There's so much that goes on. Sometimes you call it, sometimes holding you don't. on the offense, 10 yard penalty. Repeat, second down. George, this is something Lloyd Carr, I think, probably would like to see get straightened around because now this is the third trip that Michigan has been inside the red zone uh, this contest, and twice before they've come away without any points and now hurting themselves a little bit inside the 10 with this penalty to take them back. Well, this is uh, kind of a coach's dream to win a game, if he can win the game, and then have these things that he can correct so everybody keeps their head in their helmet. Yeah, you like to work on things off wins on the practice field, don't you? That's right. Six penalties now for 53 yards against Michigan. Triple wides now. Richards, Hayes, and Tyrone Butterfield. Drives by. Fire shot a little bit too tall in and out of the hands of Anthony Williams. Yeah, Anthony went up about as high as he could. Uh, had he caught the ball, he wouldn't have... Uh, gotten anything out of it he would have had to fall down just to catch it here we go again and you see how high it even if he caught it he'd fallen down so there wouldn't been much to that Scott drives back and the Michigan offense now looking at third and 14 from the Memphis 17 
357 left in the third. Drives back in the Wolverines on top 14 nothing. One more. Five step drop. From the backside, sec time down he goes. The Memphis defense charge led by Marvin Thomas, the 250 pound red shirt junior. Pocket collapsed on Scott Reisbach. Well, that's Thomas. A great effort. Good pass rush. Just ran in there and Runyon, Runyon uh, had all he could handle there. So now we're going to see uh, an opportunity here for a field goal try. Hamilton. Jay Remersma will hold at the 35 yard line. So we'll call it a 45 yard attempt from the left hash. Remy Hamilton. Didn't get it. Will come up short. Remy, who hit a 49-yarder, his career high at Champaign last week, did not get enough of it. Oh, again, another trip inside the red zone for the Wolverines goes awry. Don't go anywhere. A lot more football coming up from the big house on Pass Sports. Tim Biakabatuka and the Wolverine offense not getting any this time, but they lead Memphis 14-0. Michigan defense looking to pitch a shutout that they did for three and a half quarters before Illinois got 14 last week. Odin with pressure. Step up. Oh. Horn got him. Lost the football. Wolverines say they're on it. Michigan football. How's that for defense? Don't score, Lloyd. Let the defense. The defense now, I know what they're going to say. Hey, man, let's not just get the fumble. Let's not get the turnover. Let's take it in ourselves. The defense is just motivating everyone now they need a little help here by the offense to keep everybody on the same page rough afternoon for Bernard Oden look at Jason Horn with the first contact Trent Zekowitz will recover the fumble look. swarming defense Horn caused it Zekowitz on it the two defensive tackles in tandem oh yeah the Cleveland St. Ignatius stand out pumped up about it Wolverines right back knocking on the door in the red zone first to 10 from the 20 the of the Down to 15 before he was finally rolled to the ground that hit from the Memphis defense out of the secondary came from Keith Span don't forget now Memphis last year was number three nationally on defense they're not chopped liver they're a good defensive football team they're not doing too much offensively they didn't pass the ball last year well but look at this they come off their blocks the secondary stays in front they don't take a dive they're a good tough defensive team 230 left now in the third Eddie Davis at the tail for Tim Biafra the super this is Davis on the call and Davis down to the five Davis battles his way to the three yard line that shallow quick cut that Ed Davis can make you know who's the happiest person on the field? Bianca Dupa. Here he is. Look at him on the sideline. He was halfway out in the field when he ran that. Counter play. Big, big hole. And then the good cut. Another cut. He's on a mission, too. He wants to play. 12 yard scamper for Eddie Davis. First at goal from the three. Davis. Davis. Second rushing TD of the year for the senior from Martin Luther King High out of Detroit. Well, there's an example of repeat the good play. They ran him twice in a row. Credit the offensive coordinator Fred Jackson and Kip Cartwright. What a job. Same play over and over. Offensive blocking. Mike DeBoer. <laughs> Eddie Davis finds Pater for the second time this year. He provided the spark to fuel the Michigan comeback against Virginia. Remy Hamilton will land the PAT. The Wolverine lead is bounced out to 21 nothing. Three play, 20 yard touchdown drive in 51 seconds. Back to the big house. The Wolverines extend the lead on pass force.
any kind of paraphernalia you can get your hands on that's maize and blue you gotta suit yourself up with inside the big house in Ann Arbor Michigan fans well, rejoicing over the 21 and nothing leave now on Memphis Michael Regai George Perlis with you on passports Brian Davis one of the dangerous returners in college football awaiting the boot of Jay Feely Feely has given a little bit of extra oomph to this Michigan kick cover game going to hang this one up a little bit short trying to keep it away from Davis into the hands of Brian Powell at the 15. They did. Taken down as he crossed the 30 to about the 32 yard line. The 190 pound sophomore Powell met by those Michigan special teams led by Ernest Sanders. Right. They kept it away from Davis. Here is the touchdown again. The counter play the same play they ran the time before. Good blocking. And Davis finds the end zone. That was an excellent kick out block by George Howell that uh, that fullback who's getting play in time and oh, the senior from Martin Luther King High loving his trip to the end zone. 2 11 now left in the third as Bernard Oden goes back to work keeping it on the ground and did you see the hit from Jason Horn who wrapped up Quitman Spalding right now. Horn is so strong and active off the ball. Watch. I hope we have a uh, replay of this. Look at him. Fresh. In shape. Here he comes. Watch Jason come off. Jason, Jason quick, Horn, yeah. Great quick. Wrapping up Spalding after a gain of one. Second and nine from the 33. Oden with Anderson. Irons after him. Oh, he just got rid of it. Quickman Spalding. The ferocity that this Michigan defense is playing with today is a sight to behold. Odin, what guts. Give him credit. He got it right under the chin there. That was a blitz. They were coming from everywhere. Great, great defense. And Odin comes off the ground playing the game. That's a gutty kid. That's what it's all about. Here it is. Watch this. Watch. Here comes the blitz. Watch Odom. Watch him. Watch him. Keeps it to the very last second. Right under the chin and on his back. Bernard Odom is only hit one pass to a wide receiver. Here comes that Michigan rush again. And Ryan Roskelly has it slipped through his hands on the incompletion. And you can't blame him. They've been hitting all day. They don't want to catch the football. They've got good reason. Winner standing right next to him, ready to unload on him. This defense is awesome. 105,000 up singing the praises of the Wolverine D today inside the big house. Another three and out sequence for this Memphis offense who has not been able to generate anything against the pressure of the Wolverine D all day. Hoffman to hit another punt away. Hangs it high. Hercules will fair catch it at the 34 yard line with 39 seconds left in the third quarter of play. Wolverines will look to tack more points on the board. I think you see uh, Michigan get rid of this third quarter and get the start of the fourth quarter going and then do some substituting. They still want to preserve their shutout. They've played so well defensively. They just don't want to give that up yet. And so they're playing their people. Amani Toomer there who got dinged up early in the first quarter with the pads off. Obviously some problems in the shoulder area. We'll continue to check. Drives by slips being left. This is Mercury Hayes under the football. Memphis is on it. Memphis with the football off the Mercury Hayes fumble and turnover. Picked up by Marquise Bowling. Bowling who has recovered a fumble today and now has picked up his second as Michigan for the third time today. Bianca Batuka Williams now Mercury Hayes lays the football down on the ground. Don't think that that wasn't a, a big hit. Watch this hit on Hayes. Right there. What you're seeing here are two outstanding defensive teams. Again, remember, Memphis was number three in the country last year in total defense. Bernard Oden and the Memphis Tigers offensively has to face the hostile Michigan crowd now all revved up about this D. First attempt for the 27. This is the tailback. 
Hardman Spalding, uh-uh, taken down right away. Jared Irons steps up along with his linebacking cohort, Rob Sweat. Irons, another All-American. Irons, his father played at Dallas when I was with the Steelers, and he's got that bloodline. He's definitely we near the end, yeah, end of the third quarter. Memphis not going to get this play off. Bernard Oden didn't get it off as the third quarter expires. Only 11 yards in the third quarter for the Memphis offensive attack. Oh, the Michigan defense has this whole place electrified. We've got three down. Michigan on top of Memphis. 21 nothing when we get you back to Ann Arbor on Pass Sports. Back inside Michigan Stadium to start the fourth quarter. Second and 11 for Bernard Oden in the Memphis offense from the Michigan 27 as they try to capitalize on the turnover. Blitz coming from Bowens. Got picked up. Oden on the scramble up. Steps inside the 25, down to about the 21-yard line. Charles Woodson, Jason Horn, Rob Sweat on the Michigan hit. Bowens came in there hard on that blitz, but he lost the contain. And he'll get that corrected when they get to practice uh, next week. But he was coming 100. It was no lack of effort. Just took it on with the wrong shoulder. Just 10 yards total right offense for Bernard Owen. They're looking at third and five from the 21. Owen running option right. The 20 needed to get down to the 16 and is looking about a yard shy. David Bowen, Jared Irons, Charles Woodson, the trio on the Michigan stop. Olden given every bit he's got. Just wasn't enough on that play. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Lloyd Carr looking at his Michigan defense as they approach trying to knock down yet another fourth down conversion attempt in Memphis. Tigers were set up in good field position after the Mercury Hayes fumble the third one from Michigan today. Out of the power eye, fourth and one from the 27th. Oh, the football on the play and that option to the big fullback, Chris Reeves. He didn't get there. He didn't move at all. Wolverines have stopped Memphis on downs. Michigan football. Sweat pulled the ball out even. But it's fourth down. This is the same drill they practiced this week. It looked like the drill right there. Bazell closes, takes on the fullback and quarterback at the same time. Wolverines get it back. First to 10 from their own 19 as the defense continues their pitching of the shutout here in the fourth quarter in Ann Arbor. Eddie Davis, counter trail. Davis got stood up before he got back to the line of scrimmage. At right side of the Memphis defense, Tony Williams and Brian Barnett there on the hit along with some help from Danny Bonner. Yaka Batuka is not in there now and uh, could be saving him. You know, you want to, you, you think at this period of the game, the way your defense is playing, you're thinking of the next game. What's coming up next? You want to keep your people healthy. And what's coming up next for the Michigan Wolverines coach is Tim Biakabatuka. Looks on as a trip to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts against those Boston College Eagles. Eagles coming off a win over Virginia Tech on Thursday night. This is uh, some kind of defense, though. I think we have to recognize that Memphis is playing their hearts out defensively. They're throwing everything they have at it, and they have had success on defense. All four of those down linemen on defense for Memphis returned from last year. They have a lot of their players back, and they did have success. And that's what's caused in Michigan a little bit of a problem, but still Michigan is put on 21 points on the board, but the defense has just been outstanding. Well, that young man has been outstanding, too. You just saw Marquise Bowling go off. Picked up a couple of uh, fumble recoveries today. Lloyd Carr working on that ice. Looking at second and nine for his young redshirt freshman quarterback, Scott Dreisbach. Keep it on the ground. Eddie Davis. Across the 20, 
five, battled his way out to about the 27-yard line. Larry Davis got seven of that nine that Michigan needed. Davis came in here with 13 totes of the football for 39 yards and scored his ninth career touchdown today. I think Eddie's having a lot of fun today. Davis has scored that touchdown. He's had success almost every time they put him in in whatever game it is. So you have four people back there running. And I think that uh, before it's over, we'll see Clarence Williams get another chance to redeem himself after that fumble. Davis now five totes for two. Fourth Michigan fumble of the day. George Howell coughed it up. Davis and Dreisbach trying to run it down into the end zone. Touchdown, Memphis, Jerome Woods. Well, if your offense can't get you on the board, maybe your defense can. They call him an athlete with NFL type ability. Jerome Woods picking up the fumble recovery and scampering 20 yards to the end zone. Memphis avoids the shutout. Michigan has put the football on the ground four times today. Four times, four times too many for Lloyd Carr. But but uh, remember, the uh, people that did it were Memphis. And give them some credit. There's no way that uh, Lloyd wants to stand for that kind of fumbling, but you have to give Memphis a lot of credit. They're playing playing hard defensively, and they've been on the field a long time. Memphis Tigers avoid the shutout, as we said. Drew Paramore and Dad, the PAT. Memphis cuts the deficit now to 14 for their head coach, Rip Shear. Wolverines get the football back and try to latch on to it a little bit better. We'll get you back to Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. Memphis is on the board. Michigan lead is at 21 7. Here we go with the, the fumble. Jumps in the pile, gets it kicked out, bounces up to here all the way. And watch Dreisbach. Watch him coming, coming, coming. Just can't get there. No lack of effort. A mistake, a big mistake, a fumble. You have Memphis taking advantage of it. Dreisbach trying to recover and make the tackle to save the points. That gives Lloyd a lot of things to work on next week. Eddie Davis trying to take down Jerome Woods. Woods shook out of the tackle of Davis. Drives back a little bit tardy. Memphis just like that on the board. 12-23 left. 21-7. Clarence Williams, Mercury Hayes back in the deep spots. This is Hayes from the nine. The Memphis special teams doing a good job covering kicks and punts today. Knock Hayes down before he could get back to the 20-yard line. So Michigan will start from there. Jason Horn and the defense take a, a little bit of a respite as the offense tries to get back in gear. Scott Dreisbach while the defense takes the, uh, the break and listens to their coordinator, Greg Madison. Dreisbach has missed four of his last five pass attempts. The one he did hit to Mercury Hayes was coughed up. Howell and Davis in the eye behind Dreisbach. Eddie Davis, your big hole. Bangs out over the 30. Big, big, big hole. You'll see on the replay here, there was a lot of running room. Davis make sure he wasn't going to fumble that ball. He had both hands on it soon as he got through that line of scrimmage. Andy Davis got 11. Give him six carries now Here he goes. for 39 yards. Breaks one tackle and holds on to that football. He knows there's going to be some criticism of fumbles. He doesn't want to be one of them. First and 10 from the 32. Inside 12 minutes now. Michigan on the attack. Davis again. Payne, Joe Marinero clearing out that big hole for him. Eddie Davis got seven up to the 39-yard line. So Davis now in the Michigan offense starts to churn it out. Well, that's what happens. You get a lead, you're in the fourth quarter. This is when you want to have ball control. You want to be able to run the football. You don't want to give it up. You want to get this game over with and take a win home. And the way you do that is to control the football, run the clock, and that's what Michigan's doing here the first couple plays. Jansen, Denson, Payne, Marinero, and Gwines from tackle to tackle. Davis again met some opposition from that Memphis front as he tried to stretch it out to the 42-yard line. So three consecutive carries for Eddie Davis. 
at 11 the first tote. This one's going to leave him about a yard shy. So Michigan looking now at third and one to keep this drive alive. Sure, they get this first down. Boyd's going to tell them to bleed the clock and keep pounding that football. Try to use six, seven minutes up. What's Jay Reamer's man, Jeremy Tooman. They're going double tight ends, George, on third and one. Davis one more time. First down and more as Ed Davis secures the football and pounds his way out right. to the 45-yard line. Now the coaches at Michigan, they're looking at the clock. Keep the clock running. We want to get out of this game with a victory. Have the first time three victories in a row in eight years. Keep our people healthy. Come in here with uh, new running backs, fresh running backs. Eddie Davis getting the glad hand as he comes off. Chris Howard is checked in. See now almost what amounts to a no back look with the freshman tight end Jeremy Tooman behind Reisbach. Out route Butterfield got it. Close to a first down at about the 44 yard line of Memphis. So the little one Tyrone Butterfield grabbing his first pass hookup of the day from Scotty Dreisbach. Scott's throwing the ball high today. It's you know it's one of those days he's throwing the ball high again. Butterfield uh, used his hands caught the ball. Here comes Hayes coming out to take a break. It's pretty close. They're going to mark it. Dreisbach now on the afternoon 12 and 19 for 142 yards as our uh, man with all the numbers Ron Glassnap. Wolverines looking to see if a couple inches. First down. They picked up the first down. Which they did. Interesting formation they had uh, that last play with just uh, as we said the uh, the tight end one of the tight ends on the football field really is the only back and that being offset for drives by offset right. Here they are back in their standard eye. Yeah, the rule of Wolverines are using Mark Campbell now Campbell that back up tight end. 242 pounder red shirt freshman Chris Howard struggles and pulls out of a tackle Howard got about four down close to the 40 yard line so with the clock approaching 10 minutes left in the contest Wolverines doing just what you said coach they've marched it smartly from their own 20 almost 40 yards worth and they almost had 13 minutes ago uh, when they started this drive now they're down in the nine minutes they want to keep this ball until they have they would hope to run it off and, and uh, turn the ball over with about five minutes left to go in the game. Dreisbach looking at second and seven from the 41. Five step drop. The out and up for Mercury Hayes. Threw it too long for Hayes as he tried to make his move down around the 15 yard line working on Jerome Woods. Kevin Cobb had great coverage there. He was with him step for step had him on his back. Even a great receiver like Hayes couldn't do anything about it. You gotta give credit there to Kevin Cobb. Great coverage. Rise back in the Michigan offense. Now gonna look at third and seven. From the 41 yard line, Rod Payne out over the football. Eddie Davis now along with Todd Brooks that double wide right Dreisbach did not like what he saw looking across the line of scrimmage is going to talk about it with Greg Madison and Lloyd Carr Wolverines by two touchdowns over Memphis and we get you back to Ann Arbor on Passport. Magazine. Now there's a Lion fan who follow the fortunes of the boys tomorrow in Minneapolis. Dreisbach looking at third and seven from the 41. A play action. Stepping up and now buried as that play just never came free. Good coverage in that Memphis secondary. Coverage sack for that Memphis front four. Marvin Thomas got some help from Rod Mason. Well, that's a, what we call a coverage sack. The coverage was so tight he couldn't do anything but eat the ball. Paul Peristeris now getting the punting opportunity. Didn't hit it real well. Decent roll inside the 15. All the way down to about the 12-yard line. So Paul Peristeris with his second punt of the afternoon will give it back to the Memphis Tigers with 9.05 left 
in the contest. The reason that was a poor punt, there was a rush on. Someone came free. They were uh, they were trying to block that punt. Memphis. Memphis has thrown everything they have. Now they are backed up though on their own 12-yard line, and with this defense. Uh, it's a tough assignment. Yeah, speaking of that defense, as George Perlis does, again, that situational substitution look, as you see Bernard Oden going to look at a fresh set of Michigan defensive troops. We'll tell you about him in a minute. Oden, 9 of 18 on the day. First to 10 for the 12. Thompson coming on the blitz. Came strong from the backside. Oden never got that option left started. He got a couple of yards as he tried to make something happen. Jared Irons on the bottom of the stack. <laughs> Ben Huff now getting some playing time. The uh, redshirt sophomore, the 267 pounder in the middle along up front with William Carr, Rashid Simmons, and Joaquin Fazell. Second and nine now from the 13. Bernard Oden, actually the best ball carrier Memphis has had today. Oden on that quick out. Got his tail back quickly. Michigan's leading tackler in this 95 season, Steve King, going to take him down before he could get started. Good open field tackle. Not easy to do. Steve is leading this team with tackles coming in this game with 21 tackles, 18 solo. Here he comes now. Hi. Breaks down and that's a tough assignment out in the open field there at the corner of wide receiver. And that's excellent work out of the direction of our producer director Doug Yulaki in the truck and this wonderful pass sports crew bringing you all the pictures out of Ann Arbor. Third and eight from the 14. Oden on the roll left. Now going to try to find some room. Will Carr on the solo takedown for a four yard loss. Yeah, they play so many people. It's hard to tell who's starting, who's backing up. Carr comes in there and makes a big, big play. He's backing up Jason Horn. That's what I mean. They've got a lot of weapons. You talked about it, Coach. Those fresh legs that they continue to throw at you uh, late in football games will uh, hurt you. Coughlin from his own goal line gets his kick away and booms that tight spiral. With a fair catch at about the 49. So the Wolverines in nice operating position. 7.03 left in the contest. Michigan on top of Memphis, 21 7. Well, there's seven minutes and three seconds. Let's see what happens in this drive. See if they can use up five minutes of this clock. Time the Wolverines punched it in after the Rob Sweat interception was with the 216 left in the third on the Eddie Davis touchdown run. Sweat with the second half interception. Trent Zankowitz with a fumble recovery. Double title. Davis in the tail of the tandem for Scott Dreisbach. He's on the ground with Eddie on the isolation blast, following the block of Joe Marinero on the right side. Davis crossing midfield, got about five down to the 46 of Memphis. Jerome Woods on the stop with a senior tailback from Detroit. Here they go. They're bleeding the clock now. They're going to stay in the huddle and come out of there with. 20 seconds to go. Eddie Davis now with 59 yards on 10 carries in the football. Jumbo look again with a double touch. Oh, oh. Davis. Inside the 40. Down to the 38 yard line. Eddie Davis working off the right side, following the blocks of Joe Marinero and center Rod Payne. Got eight first down Wolverines. Again, that same play, that's the counter play. You'll see the trapping. Here we go. Big hole, big hole. Haven't seen a lot of fullback Chris Floyd. Now after the George Howell fumble, haven't seen him. Going with the red shirt freshman normally tight end. Mark Campbell at that up spot. Davis again. Tried to follow the Campbell block. Davis carried. And he only got back to the line of scrimmage as he tried to squirm his way out of a couple of tackles. Jerome Woods again coming up to uh, help support on that stop along with Dorian Sutton. But well, that was an isolation play, and that's not working as well as their counter with uh, Denson 
pulling and trapping number 51. See if they come back with the, their successful play that counter. See if we see uh, Denson pull here left guard. I mentioned Chris Floyd a moment ago. He's now back at the tail giving Eddie Davis a blow. Second and ten from the 38. Drives by. Out cut. Hayes. Mercury Hayes climbing the ladder. Exceptional grab down at the 16 yard line. 21 yard hookup. Scott Dreisbach. Mercury Hayes. He laid that on a rope and right there. Beautiful, beautiful reception. It was thrown without much air under it. It was on the line. I guess all you have to do is get close to Hayes and he's going to catch it. Not bad coverage. Cobb's there covering well. Goes up for the ball, but Hayes just has that inside position on him and makes the catch. All hands. 21 yards and a first down for the senior out of Houston, Texas. Five grabs for 96 yards now for Mercury Hayes. At the counter. Counter play. Floyd trying to break a tackle or two. Did that. He pulled out of the tackle of Brian Barnett. Wiggled his way inside the 15. Down to about the 14. We'll give Floyd three and call it second and seven. Denson again pulling on that counter trap. Only they had some penetration that time from the outside. That's what hurt the play. We approach the four and a half minute mark in the contest. That young man two years ago, one of the finest tailbacks the public school league in Detroit has uh, witnessed for quite some time. Chris Cooley. Cooley. Yep. Cooley yeah. High School. Great, great bat. Near the coach's old stomping grounds on the west side of Detroit. Not far from West. Mm -hmm. Second and eight now. Inside handoff. Drives by. Trying to make some things go in the middle. Now with the football now at the 12 yard line and the Wolverines looking at third and five we'll come back to tell you how this drive ends Wolverines by two touchdowns. <laughs> NHL talk Thursday night Red Wings hotline it's only on pass sports. Third and five now for Scott Reisbach in the Michigan offense. Tim Baker, Eddie Davis back at the tail. Hayes with motion. Blitz coming. Reisbach stepped up. Reisbach tried to find something working along those hash marks and got took down. If he could break that one tackle, Reisbach was going to the end zone and got dragged down by Jerome Woods, also along with Keith Spann. Here goes Hamilton. I think it's a good call for Lloyd to have him take another shot at it. He missed the last field goal, redeem himself here and feel in the right spirit. Remy Hamilton, who missed in the third quarter from 46 yards away, now goes out of the Jay Reamers Mahold right hash of the 19. So it'll be a 29 yard opportunity. In the air, straight and through, and split the upright. So Remy Hamilton's 29 yard field goal expands the lead. Michigan on top of Memphis by 17. Well, that makes Hamilton feel better now. He missed one, he got that one, and that's what you try to do. I hope here in this uh, last couple minutes, if Michigan gets the ball, we see Clarence Williams in there again. He needs to feel good about himself. And I want to ask Coach George Perlis something about practice routine as we take a look at the first year head coach of the Michigan Wolverines Lloyd Carr. During practice time in the middle of the week did you ever stop practice for about five minutes to give the kids a uh, much needed popsicle break. No I didn't but I should have I think it's a <laughs> good idea that uh, tell our viewers about Lloyd Carr and his popsicles. Well, he gives him a break on those hot, muggy days, and uh, it, it's like going in at halftime. It simulates uh, the halftime of practice, like we'd have the simulation of halftimes during the game. And uh, he's not the only one doing it. There are other people doing it, and it's uh, it's not a bad bad idea. And of course, uh, every year people come up with uh, better ways to simulate the action of the game, and that's one of them. According to the coaching staff, the kids love it. Gives him about five minutes to regroup. Lloyd Carr 
part of a quickening the pace here at Michigan. Jay Feely banging it down deep to Brian Davis. Davis came out of that end zone up to about the 19-yard line, but that's all. Michigan special teams, John Agnews Charles, along with uh, Woody Hankins, Tyrone Noble, all of them getting a piece of Brian Davis. Well, Davis wanted to return that. He uh, could have just as easily downed it in the end zone and got it out to the 20, but he wanted to run it. Wolverines tacking three on the board here in the fourth to bump that total out to 24-7. Wolverine defense still pitching a shutout in their own right because Memphis touchdown scored on the fumble recovery by Jerome Woods. Bernardo got quickly spalding his tailback. About the only thing that Odin has been able to get going today is That's throwing the Spalding and Blevins Spalding. out of the backfield. Wide receivers, George, have been negated. No, they're just not that kind of team with that option. And what they're doing is throwing the ball right in front of them, the quarterbacks, on crossing patterns. So they're running away from those hits. Because you turn around and catch that ball in place, you're going to get tapped. They give the Odin Spalding hookup to six, second and four, option right. Blevins uh -oh, will not get to the corner. Chuck Winters, Jason Horn on the dual hit of Blevins, the fullback of Memphis. Well, that was a different kind of option. That's like a swing option or a speed option, and uh, there's no fake up inside. Uh, Michigan's too well schooled and too quick to run that one. The only option, the best, the best chance they have with their option, Memphis, is uh, riding the fullback inside and having the quarterback keep the ball. That's the thing, the only thing that's really worked to any degree for them. Seven turnovers in the football game today. Wolverines have put it down four times, and you only can wonder what the offensive total may be. They got 24 on the board with the turnovers. On third and nine, over the field pressure. Jason Horn had him wrapped up before he finally got it away in complete. Michigan defense again showing Memphis the way to three and out one more time. They just come at you. It's, it's tough. 0 for 15 on third down conversion tries for this Memphis offense. Look at that. Look. Just tremendous pressure by fresh defensive linemen. Mike Coughlin in one more time to boot it away. Mercury Hayes at about the 44 yard line. Excuse me, Tyrone Butterfield this time. Butterfield's going to fair catch it at the 39 yard line with but a minute and 53 seconds left in the football game. 50 to 10. Now the Wolverine offense will come back out for Scott Dreisbach, who's 12 of 20 this afternoon. They've done it mainly on the uh, Tamunga Biaka Batuka legs, a couple of touchdowns and 140 yards. Eddie Davis, who you see coming back out. Different look for the Wolverine helmet this year. Now, you know, usually the Wolverines get the Wolverine decal inside the Mays football for individual plays. Lloyd Carr has decided this year they're not going to go with that. So we'll see a little bit different in a cleaner look on the Michigan helmet as Eddie Davis goes to work on first down out over the 45, about the 46 yard line. Brian Greasy now in at quarterback, the son of. NFLer Bob Greasy for the Wolverines. I asked uh, about that, uh, putting those awards on the helmet. And Lloyd's philosophy, according to the equipment people, is that he wants them to play as a team. And he's not interested in individual honors. He's interested in them playing as a team. And it's working. Plus, the equipment man is very, very happy. Mr. Falk? Mr. Falk doesn't have to worry about all those things on the helmet. Minute 15 left of the contest. Brian Greasy going to keep it on the ground. This is sophomore Chris Floyd bangs up close to that first down marker. Floyd hit the midfield stripe. As the Wolverines will go to 3-0, and and as we talked about at the top of the show, George Perlis, this will be Michigan's best start since 1986 when they were 3-0. That year, they won nine in a row before Minnesota beat them. Remember Ricky Foggy? Yes. The yes. quarterback for Minnesota beat Michigan here in 86. And then the Wolverines went on to finish up 11 and 2, and they were ranked number one at 9 and 0. So, best start since 86. That's quite, a, quite an accomplishment to be in your first year and to have that happen. And then to do some things on your own, whatever you do, taking the, the, the decals off the helmet uh, because he wants them to play as a team. 
Uh, I'm telling you, when you watch practice, there are a bunch of happy kids. And that's not easy to do. It's not easy to push kids, to motivate them, to ask them to run and, and lift weights and to go to school and go to tutoring. And they're happy and they're pulling for each other. It's a beautiful team. And uh, they've got a lot going for them. It's, it's just beginning. They're a third of the way through their season. But uh, right now, they're at the top of their game. I don't think you saw too many people get injured today. Uh, Toomer's the only one. And I'm sure that they're just making sure that they keep him and, and don't risk uh, any type of injury. Uh, that's the one that, uh, and probably the only one right now that they're concerned about. There's Floyd in there at uh, tailback. And you're looking at the balance of what we have here for you on pass sports with Michigan and Michigan State football. Next week, Nick Saban goes down to Louisville. Make sure you stay with us all college season long here on pass. Chris Floyd on the call. Uh, Floyd dragging some white shirts with him. Got the first down as we hit a minute and three left in the contest. Marcus Garrett. Well, I have a moment. I certainly want to uh, send out our thanks to the uh, Wolverines, uh, Vice President of uh, Sports Information, Bruce Motti, Assistant Sports Information Director Jim Snyder, and certainly all the fine staff, Athletic Director Joe Roberson, Head Coach Lloyd Carr, and all the staff here at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor who made uh, George and I uh, very comfortable in doing our job for you this day. Brian Greasy tossed sweeping with Chris Floyd with a good cut and leveled it off down inside the 40 yard line as he turned that corner and got whacked out of bounds with 33 seconds left in the football game. Mike, I want to echo that also. Uh, Bruce Motti and Lloyd Carr, his whole staff, uh, Bo Schimbecker, Jerry Hanlon, uh, Terrell Burton, no everybody here has been very, very uh, good to us, and I appreciate it. I know it'd be pretty easy to turn their back on someone that's been competing with them a long time. I, uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. I've had a lot of fun today and I appreciate all the the good things that people have done for us since we've been here. Jack Wiedenbach came by, Don Canham, uh, Ron Kramer, just a bunch of good people. Brian Greasy going to put it up. Looking for that outcome. Todd Brooks got tripped in the secondary as he went after the football. Got the feet tangled up did Todd Brooks with Memphis's defensive back Kevin Cobb along with Jerome Woods. Just the tail end here of the trip. Well, Brian Greasy is going to be looking at a third and two. You know that number 18 that our producer director Doug Yalaki was showing us a minute ago wasn't a Monty Toomer but I think you Baywatch fans certainly know all about uh, the lovely young lady by the name of Gina. That is a staple on that popular TV show. Speaking of staples, Chris Floyd trying to make the cut and get to the corner. Floyd got knifed down at about the 37 yard line as the clock continues to roll and we might have seen our last play of the football game. Inside 10 seconds Lloyd Carr in his first season as a head coach here in Ann Arbor. Now 3-0 as this one is done. Bring it up to the Wolverines. Michigan beats Memphis 24-7 as Rip Shearer and his Tigers of Memphis now fall to 0-2 while Lloyd Carr and the Wolverines at 3-0 in this 1995 season. We'll come back and tell you about it. Wolverines with a 17 point win over Memphis as a Monty Toomer saw action only sparingly today. Back to the big house in Ann Arbor with you in just a moment. A happy throng of 105,000, the usual filing out of the big house in Ann Arbor, Michigan's Wolverines by 17 over Memphis, 24 to 7. Defensive dominated unbelievably. George Perlis, Michael Regai, certainly happy you joined us on Pass Sports. George, this defense so monumental in what they accomplish. We talked about all the enthusiasm they generate. 
they got after the football for 60 minutes today. Mike, I thought they'd play a good defensive game, but not this good. That was a great, great defensive game, using a lot of people, fresh people. I think that team could have played another game defensively. There's so many people that play. They're so fresh. It was a great, great exhibition of defense. It's an outstanding situation for Greg Madison, the defensive coordinator, to be in. He could keep people fresh with those legs in the fourth quarter that finally start wearing you down. We saw that on exhibit. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the numbers from 60 minutes of football in this Michigan win and go down to the rushing yards. Memphis less than one yard per carry, only 19 yards generated, while the Michigan rushing game put up 228 worth today. Well, Lloyd's going to be happy about that. He wanted to get this running game going. He's only averaged 100 yards in the first two games a game. Now with 228, that's more like it. He'll, he'll, he'll keep improving on that. Situation that Michigan probably wants to take care of. Uh, they turned the football over four times today. And as a matter of fact, it cost Michigan pitching the shutout on the interception return, the fumble recovery return by Jerome Woods. Otherwise, Michigan, almost like they did against Illinois, comes up with a shutout today. Well, Mike, the good news on that is, is Lloyd's got a lot of things to, worry, uh, to work on. The most ideal situation is have a victory and have some mistakes that you can correct so you don't have them a next game and that's the way you become a championship team he's got a lot of things to work on he has a victory so the kids will be very very uh, up to having criticism and that's how you get better with corrective criticism coach George Perlis it was a pleasure being with you today we're going to do this again and have fun when Miami of Ohio comes to Ann Arbor in a couple of weeks well I enjoyed it and thank you it's fun working with you George Perlis outstanding in what he offered today as we expected he would be a couple of Tim Biakabatuka touchdowns in this one from Eddie Davis propelled the Michigan Wolverines to the 24-7 victory over the Memphis Tigers. Now for our executive producer, Keith Allen, and our producer-director, Doug Yalaki, and all of this outstanding fast sports crew in Ann Arbor, I'm Michael Regai. Hope you enjoyed, everybody. Lloyd Carr's 3-0. Michigan beats Memphis 24-7. Until next time, so long. This is one of the electrifying houses in all of college football. You're inside Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We welcome you on Pass Sports as Randy Walker and his upstart Redskins of Miami from the Mid-American Conference come in to battle the eighth-ranked Michigan Wolverines of head coach Lloyd Carr. Great to see everyone.